Hello, uh, welcome to uh, to Hollywood Hemptress Hour's Ganjathon, and uh, you know, thank you for um, being here and tuning in and uh, listening to the show. Uh, this is uh, kind of an experiment here. Um, we are um, the Patient Advocacy Network. Hey, how are you, Terry? I founded the Patient Advocacy Network. Oh, almost 10 years ago with a group of patient advocates across the state of California, we really felt that um, uh, the patient's voice wasn't being heard in legislation. Uh, we were hearing a lot from people who are calling themselves industry people, uh, but if you're going to have a really good system for providing safe, affordable access to medical marijuana, you need to hear from the patients, those people who are most affected about that access. And so we founded this organization to be that voice. Uh, we've provided a lot of education and training to patients. Um, we teach patients how to handle law enforcement encounters, how to effectively engage the de democracy, how to put on a rally, a protest, how to manage media, how to be an activist on the internet. Uh, so we, we really give medical marijuana patient tools that they can use whether um, whether it's for this cause or anything. I mean that's the great thing about learning how to engage democracy is if you can learn how to change this law you can change any law. Um, and, and so in addition to that we also do a lot of um, uh, education and advocacy and outreach with our elected officials. We, we are that voice for those patients who uh, are too ill or too afraid to go speak to their elected officials. So between myself and Shona and uh, our other advocates, we've spoken before city councils, board of supervisors, um, the Sacramento uh, legislature. We have provided written testimony to uh, our Congress for some of the congressional hearings that they've had on medical marijuana. So we're in the trenches and we're in the halls of the legislature and we're also in the courtroom. We do court support. I'm also a court qualified expert. Um, so, you know, we've raised legal defense funds for people. So if it has to do with helping patients and medical marijuana, Patient Advocacy Network is doing it. The only way to really end this prohibition is on the federal level. It's great that we're doing state initiatives and we'll talk more about the, Cali the upcoming California state initiative. And it's good that we have all this uh, statewide grassroots activity. However, ultimately, we know the, that the way we're going to end the raids and get the Department of Justice to stop threatening landlords and all of our other rights um, is to end this on the congressional level. But yeah, no, you mentioned this, this whole outreach and work that we do with patients. And, you know, just like today, I, you know, I had one patient, I had two different patients get a hold of me in the last couple of days who are in crisis. One of them is in like a services crisis as far as getting food and medicine and the other one's in a housing crisis where he's you know afraid he's going to lose his housing and you know in addition to uh, all the background and, and knowledge I have from working in dispensaries and cultivating marijuana and being an activist and a court qualified expert I also got about 20 years um, experience as a teacher and a social worker so you know between like myself between myself and you and, and Shona we bring uh, a lot, uh, just a wealth of um, experience and knowledge to this organization. And, you know, the whole reason we're having this Ganjathon is, you know, our organization, we're here at the end of the year. We've got a really small shortfall um, that we're trying to cover. $2,700 is all we need to get through the end of the year. And so we're reaching out through your audience, Terry, because you've got a really broad, wide, and diverse audience of people um, that are. Um, very conscious people, not necessarily the same people that we've been raising money for for a very long time. Um, the, the marijuana community is very battle fatigued, and I'm sure we'll talk more about what all has gone on uh, in, in California and beyond uh, with the federal interference and the local restrictive permitting that has put a lot of strain on the patient community between either having to file lawsuits or uh, spend money on voter initiatives or other things like that. It, it makes it difficult here at the end of the year for small grassroots organizations. So I'm hoping that um, 
your wonderful uh, viewers, listeners will go to our website and just make a small donation at our um, at our website right there, and we'll mail you a tax deductible receipt. It's simple as that. They saw the video at the beginning. They know who we are, what we're about, and what we do. And now it's to ask everybody, not 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 what you know. Mary Jane has done for you because we know what Mary Jane has done for you. It's it's time for us all to step up and ask what we're going to do for Mary Jane. For sure, there was um, yeah, yeah. While while we queue up that video, so back four years ago, about four and a half years ago now, uh, Viana Haju was one of many dispensaries uh, that was raided in what we call here in Los Angeles the the Devonshire Division. Our um, Los Angeles is broken down into. Uh, 21 police divisions. One of them is the Devonshire Division. And that city council member and that particular LAPD division decided that they were going to just shut down indiscriminately every medical marijuana dispensary in that policing district. And that included a, a large swath of the North San Fernando Valley. So it was Northridge, Chatsworth, Devonshire, Mission Hills, North Hills, and, and those that little surrounding area. I think they shut down over 20, somewhere between 20 and 30 dispensaries in that area. Um, ironically, Viana's Collective, uh, Canamed of Northridge, the third medical marijuana dispensary to open in the San Fernando Valley, had all of the paperwork that the city required for the various lists that they, that's a whole other subject, right, Los Angeles and, and their, their uh, attempt to regulate uh, Viana jumped through all those hoops and got on all those lists and therefore had all the paperwork and criteria and the LAPD shut her down anyway and it was a very violent SWAT style raid um, you'll get to hear it in Viana's own words but uh, while she was in custody her blood pressure shot up immensely she explained to the officers that she was dizzy she had a headache that she was having trouble seeing out of one eye that she didn't feel good ringing in the head she let the officer know that her blood pressure medication was in her purse, uh, that she needed it, and the officers never gave it to her. Uh, she was booked and then she was booked and then immediately sent to the emergency room when the medics at the um, uh, Van Nuys jail saw her and took her blood pressure. Their question is, why is she here? Get her out of here. Um, not only was the raid unjustified, but the way she was treated in custody was absolutely atrocious. And so hopefully um, uh, your, your viewers will get to see a little bit more about her story from her own words. And um, this is the kind of work we do. We've been going to court with her every month for the last four years uh, as she's been fighting this case. Um, the reason the police have been so adamant about fighting it is they know they know they did wrong while she was in custody and she's got a potential case against them. Um, so yeah, we've been raising legal defense funds and we've been uh, there in the courtroom with her and I will be volunteering uh, as a court qualified expert again in her case next month. In August of 2009, Viana Haju lost her home, her health, and her livelihood for doing what many people in California are doing right now. She was the director of a medical marijuana dispensary. Her collective was raided by the LAPD in a SWAT style manner. Uh, they, her, she and her employees were held at by gunpoint. They were talked to in a derogatory, uh, abusive manner, and they even threatened to shoot her animals. Uh, what they found and what they confiscated was $120 and four pounds of dried cannabis leaves. Let's listen to how, what happened to Viana Haju right now in her own words. Um, with the, the guns drawn, there were a lot of cops. Uh, they uh, called me names. He called me, he said, get the fuck out of here, bitch. Uh, I told him that uh, I need to put my dogs away, I have two small dogs. And he said, I don't give a fuck, I'll shoot them. And um, I, um, in, in the dispensary was me, my security guard, our security guard, and uh, a patient. Uh, the patient uh, got uh, very scared and uh, he started throwing up. Um, they dragged us out uh, outside of the dispensary. 
and uh, they handcuff us and uh, they search uh, the place and they find uh, in the drawer hundred and twenty dollars and uh, less than a pound of uh, m uh, medicine uh, in the jars. Um, he uh, was a very, very um, bad talking to, to me, called me names and uh, told me uh, he's, he, he went to my one of the volunteer house and uh, put everybody on the floor, what I heard later on, and uh, put the shotgun to their heads like they did to my daughter. And um, I, I told uh, that if they go to my apartment uh, to get the key, so because I have the, my daughter, it, which is a, it's a, a bipolar schizophrenia, and uh, she's a suicidal. And uh, he didn't care. He said, I don't care. And um, During the raid, Viana began to feel dizzy and faint and she asked the LAPD for her blood pressure medication. They took the medication out of her purse and sat it in front of her, but never gave her a pill. Later on that evening, she was booked, and the police asked her to sign a release, what she thought was a release for her possessions. She was faint, she was dizzy, she wasn't feeling well. Later on, she found out that she signed a confession admitting her guilt of having 50 pounds of marijuana and her bail was set at $50,000. Later that evening, Viana suffered a stroke. Medication, because I have a very bad headache and my blood pressure was up, and uh, they took the medication out of my purse and uh, they put it in front of me. I was uh, handcuffed and sit on the couch. They put it on front of me on the table and never gave it to me. Uh, couple of, a couple of hours later, when they brought me to the station, um, I told the commander in, chef, in charge there that I have a very bad headache and they didn't give me my medication, my health medication. Uh, uh, this one told them to book me and uh, then bring me to the jail in Van Nuys because they don't have a um, nurse on staff. And um, while they were um, booking me, they uh, made me sign a few pieces of papers, which I didn't have my glasses, they didn't let me read. They told me that it's for my possessions. They, they took all my possessions from me, and I signed. Uh, to find out later in the court that they uh, put uh, a piece of paper, which was said was a confession, that I signed it, that uh, um, uh, I confessed to whatever they, they thought I did. Most medical marijuana dispensaries are raided by the federal government. The reason why this happens is because the federal government does not recognize state law. Marijuana is a class one drug, therefore it's federally illegal. In Viana Haju's case, her dispensary was raided by the LAPD. Viana had all the correct documentation, she had paid her business license and her taxes, and yet she was still raided by her own state police. Why do we pay taxes for this injustice? My franchise, the tax board, it states medical marijuana dispensary collective. So if I didn't lie to you, and even today you go to them and you have to pay extra because if you are, they ask you, you are you selling medical marijuana? If we are illegal to sell medical marijuana, why you ask me to pay you money for that? Right. You should said no, you cannot open you this. Open this. You cannot you open this. this is but no, they it. said no, you have LA City Councilman Jose Weizar campaigns that the reason why we need to shut down the medical marijuana dispensaries is because they're profiteers making over $100,000 a month. Like every medical marijuana dispensary owner is Pablo Escobar. This is not true. The real Pablo Escobar is something much more sinister. It's a corporation called Big Pharma. Viana Haju is nothing like that. What is your mansion? What is your car? What is your money? I said, what money? What are you talking about? And he said, oh, you know what I'm talking about. I said, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Because I don't, I don't have mansion, I don't have uh, 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 cars. I had, I was driving a Honda Civic, 
and I was living in an apartment with my daughter and uh, <laughs> I had a salary of $2,200 a month and uh, they paid me my medical insurance. That's what I got from running a, a, a managing a, a, a legal dispensary. We didn't have, we were not making money. It was a non-profit organization. We did not make money off of this. A lot of people wonder why Viana won't just take a plea and get it over with. But Viana has done nothing wrong and she will not lie in a court of law. Well, I should not take a plea because if I take a plea, I would be a liar. I never lied in my life. And if I raise my hand in the court and I say that I will say the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth and help me God, if I take the plea, I will be a liar. Viana has lost her health, her home, and her ability to be employed is non-existent. The affair, I never got anything back from them. Uh, it cost me my health, uh, my apartment, I got evicted. Um, the lawyer uh, cost me over $25,000. And uh, right now, I really need your help. And um, um, I appreciate that if you guys can help me out to fight this system. This system is wrong. We need to fight this. Please help me to fight this system. American citizen, I am concerned about the militarization of our police. Just recently, the ACLU is doing an investigation on our police force. They want to find out why SWAT teams are being deployed, how much money is being used, whether or not anybody's injured. The Homeland Security has just ordered 26 million rounds of ammo, which equates to 12.6 billion bullets, which means that they can shoot every American and immigrant with five bullets. Why is this happening when our Second Amendment rights are in question? Just recently in 2011, there was some sort of militarized police that nobody could identify that seemed to come out of Disneyland in Anaheim. And some people believe that Disneyland is the happiest place on earth. On the police car, there are the words protect and serve. But who are they protecting? And what do they serve? It's just like a euphemism, an advertisement, something that we've been conditioned with, like good to the last drop. Is it really good to the last drop? Well, quite frankly, it's just the last drop. It may be good or it may not be. Have it your way. I don't know about you, but every time I go to Burger King and ask, ask for a cider ranch dressing, they say no. It takes a licking, but it keeps on ticking. Well. That one may be true because it takes a good lick to make me tick. But here's one for you. Nothing says oppression like a gun in their face. Now, maybe if we add some snappy music and some good visuals, people will begin to believe that one too. Right now, I really need your help. And, um... Um, I appreciate that if you guys can help me out to fight this system. This system is wrong. We need to fight this. Please help me to fight this system. Hello, welcome to Hollywood Hemdress Hour. I'm going to bring DJ up here in just a second. Uh, that was uh, the that was Viana Haju speaking in her own words. And uh, when I bring uh, well, it's very interesting. Since we made that video uh, and we did that interview uh, with her for your program, 
um, a very interesting development has happened in her case and something that doesn't happen very often in a criminal case. As, as you know, this has dragged on for a while and there's been a lot of different reasons why it's dragged on for a while. One is the DA has changed prosecutors in this case six times at least. And so every time there's a change, there's a continuance and a continuance. And so, you know, six months can go on and then we show up and we're supposed to have a hearing on some motion and Oh, lo and behold, a new prosecutor has been assigned to the case. <laughs> and so we've been playing this game for a while. Uh, in the meantime, her, uh, giving out shouts, her, her uh, criminal defense attorney, Yasik Lentz, uh, who's been, he's been a knight in shining armor for her in this, uh, in that his fee so far to her has been very, very reasonable. Uh, he charged her $25,000. We still have a little bit left to pay him on that, but that was, the fee he said he would take to do this, and he's been doing it for four and a half years. Uh, and they drag her into court almost every month. Um, and, of course, she has to be there, and she has to show up, or she'll get her bail revoked or whatever. So um, so the, this, these last couple, three hearings we had, um, in one, I think I, I stated in one of your programs, the judge wanted to dismiss it and saw that the prosecution got so flustered and dramatic about his... Uh, even mentioning that he was considering di d uh, dismissing the case, this was during the jury trial, um, he said, okay, then I will give you prosecution the opportunity to um, submit a brief explaining why I should not dismiss the case, and, um, you know, Mr. Lentz will have the opportunity to write a rebuttal brief as to why I should dismiss the case, and, you know, we'll come back and do that, right? So that's what we were geared up for. We show up. Yasik gets ready to stand up and make a couple statements at the beginning of the hearing. And the prosecutor, she gets up and she runs across to the bench and she throws some paperwork down to the clerk and she says, this case is dismissed. I'm dismissing the case. And it's being refiled right now in Department S. And the judge is like, what's going on? And Yasik's like, what's going on? And me, I immediately think, oh gosh, if they're refiling this and moving this to another court, they could revoke her bail and she could end up in the set, you know, in the slammer. And so I grab her hand and I was like, give me your son's phone number. And all of a sudden her eyes look at me like, oh shit. So she quickly gives me her son's phone number so I can put it in my phone in case we show up down there and they immediately decide to put her in custody, which fortunately did not happen. But that is how rapidly and how crazy things were at that moment that, you know, even Yasik realized what I was doing and gave me a nod like, yeah, that's a good idea just in case. Um, but what they did is they just, they refiled the, the case in a different court with different judges. And technically that makes her start all over again. So what Yasik could do by law is he could charge her a brand new retainer because this case technically is starting all over. But he's not doing that. Um, but, uh, like I said, we still need a little bit to uh, raise to give to him. And he will want, again, another small fee if it has to go all the way through to a jury trial and or an appeal. But, uh, yeah, that the case that just keeps going on and on and on. So, yeah, everyone, um, yeah, say a prayer for Viana. Her health is not good. This has been very, very stressful on her. Um, we can use everyone's support. All you guys didn't get to hear me, um, which is fine. <laughs> you know, um, yes. And the, what we were saying is, is that we were talking about um, Viana and uh, and how important it is to to um, to help her and to give a donation. I'm trying to bring Dejay back up in the window. It's really hard to like speak and talk and do production all at the same time. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure it's quite, I'm my sure. head is going, Ugh. and then like, I'll, I don't know, our listeners, you know, need to know, but I was up like all night um, editing the first video that we showed. And You're so back. I, so I had about four hours sleep. I was also on Revolution Radio um, uh, on the Steve uh, Stephen D. Kelly show. I want to give a shout out to Revolution Radio, Revolution Radio, because you know, um, besides um, doing um, the Hollywood Hempress Hour on the Time for Hemp Network, 
uh, which is um, the only pro cannabis uh, network on iHeartRadio, and a shout out to Casper Leach and uh, and the Time for Hemp Network. I'm doing five nights a week on Hollywood Hempress Hour, uh, which you've been a guest on, and um, we'll do be you know making a report at a regular time. Um, DJ, DJ and I have actually done a lot of um, of this type of stuff before media stuff, and and we've uh, co-hosted um, the show before, and and so now we are here. We are doing the Gonjathon, and and yeah, you know, look at that button. Um, make it happen. Um, uh, you know, uh, you know, go to go to cannabissavelives.org. Go to the donation button. Make make a donation for people like Vianna has you. And you know, that's just like only one thing that 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 you're working on, that we're working on, and the different projects as an as an organization we got going right. on. And, and people can people can designate their donation. I have no problem with that. And, and one of the ways I've made that simple for people is when people go to our website, um, CannabisSavesLives.org, um, there's the general donate button that's on the front page, and we will divide that up uh, as needed through for all of the programs and services. <clears throat> However, we made some specific donate buttons uh, that people can find by clicking over to our blog at Cannabis Patient Voice. And uh, right there uh, on the uh, right-hand column, there are some different... Uh, icons. You'll see the icon for uh, legalize it, uh, which is a, a big rally. The, the icon is the, the pictures of a giant rally going on um, for legalization. And that's the donate button for people who want to support our campaign 420, which we can talk about in a little while. And one of the uh, icons is for access of love. So if people specifically want to support our social service center and I should you know talk a little bit more about what access of love really is and, and what that wonderful uh, sister organization of ours does and then there's another icon which is Lady Justice and it says the Viana Haji Legal Defense Fund and people can click specifically on that as well so um, you know for specific if people want their donation to go to specific uh, projects they can do that or they can just call me my phone number is right there on the front page of our website, and you know it'll ring you right here. <laughs> and I'm I'm here to, to here to help anybody who uh, wants to get involved. If people would um, rather um, uh, not make a, a donation online and they'd rather mail a check, no problem. If people want to deposit uh, money directly into our bank account by walking into Chase, our, our patient advocacy network's uh, bank is with Chase. No problem, you can communicate that to me. It can still be tax deductible if you don't need a receipt fine. The wonderful thing about a 501c3 is your, your donation is anonymous, um, so um, people can support in any way they can. Um, and if people have other creative ideas about how they'd like to help and support, I'm, I'm open to that. There's well, one thing we, we were talking about last night was like, and I, I mentioned that if, if you still want to do this, is like if they don't want to be anonymous, like let's say, you know, um, you give uh, $215, you know, and you have a, um, you know, a group or a, an organization or a cannabis paper or, you know, a product out there, um, you know, we will, um, you know, uh, give you a shout out. We'll include your name in our videos that we uh, you know, we add a special thank you to you, and uh, you know, I will um, also um, give a shout out on you on um, you know Hollywood Hemptress Hour for you know for contributing, making do donation if that's the way you want to use it, and then it would be tax deductible. Um, you know, it, it's just it's just a, a public thank you if you do care to have that. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, we're yeah. more than happy to support you know to to um, acknowledge those people and. You know, like I said, I know we're, we're live, um, uh, not a regularly, uh, and you might want to check my mic level, I'm, I'm hearing as, as well, um, make sure that, that I'm, I'm not a, uh, I'm hearing I'm fading out. Um, um, you could be if, if you could be fading out because of the fact that, um, that it's, an, it, it's like an internet thing, maybe. Um, you know, like if, if it's in and out, it's probably happening for that reason. Okay. Um, you know, if you're not having any sound at all, then um, then there's probably something um, that there's probably something going on. Gotcha. Um, well, I'll just make sure that I speak up nice and nice and loud. Yeah, and then like I mean, I think like you know, they get out the bullhorn. 
Yeah, I mean, and 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 the the in in the future, and here here's another thing why why you know Pan could use um you know a donation is we actually need microphones. Um, there's uh there's like the snowball and there's like equipment that we could use to, um, be able to broadcast more efficiently. And if you want to contribute, we we do have um a lot a big lots of message a big message to get out there to people. And um, DJ is uh, definitely doing um a a lot of work. And, you know, I noticed I don't even have you up in the screen right now. Well, you're kind of in the screen. It's weird. The smaller box is over to the side, but it's not the full box. It's weird. I guess it's giving kind of a little bit of a David Lynch feel to it or <laughs> Andy Wall. You know, it's like, that's the thing about thinking about when you mess up on the Internet, there's something kind of like really like, you know, surreal about it. But, you know, the good thing about the Internet is, is I think people are kind of forgiving about it not being quite perfect. I, I love the fact that it's just some dude in front of a desk talking about government affairs. <laughs> you know, it's like because he doesn't have like you know uh, but, uh, so you know NBC so asking him a question you think like on giant microphones and they have giant headphones and they've got microphones in front of them and they're ranting and I'm cool. like look at this new digital soapbox it's wonderful yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's an exciting time right now. I mean, like, we're, we're, we, we can actually do things like this and, um, you know, let people uh, know and see you and, and see what, um, you know, uh, what the organization does and, and uh, you know, how we work together and how, you know, Shona works with us and how it, it, it's all kind of a, a, a whole compartment of everything, you sure. know, working together. Well, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you want, I mean, I'm, I'm more than happy. Um, I don't know if we have a... Um another video clip or anything coming up soon but we do actually I can talk a little bit about what we do have coming up um what the campaign 420 is about well why don't we do that after we do that we'll take a little break you know she's a little bit do the video clip and we'll come back and 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 refresh and talk about it yeah I think it's time um this is going to be probably about like um you know three minutes it's a little comedy it's actually it's actually one of my clips i thought you know i put in there this is like a show that i did recently um where i I got to open for um for wu-tang the new wu-tang clan the new generation yeah and um so and this is um this is i titled it i titled the youtube video empowered goddess a comedy and so um, i'm going to play that clip here for a moment and then um and then we'll be in so we can get a little bit of a laugh <laughs> and, uh, and and hopefully, hopefully you laugh. you call me. 
whatever. <laughs> and so my thought is, here's my thought. If he works for, for Goldman Sachs, Lehman Brothers, or Bank of America, Wall Street, no, 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 uh, or Wall Street and um, Walmart, anything with a wall in it, do not fuck him. <laughs> All right, um, you know, <laughs> actually our song started to go off again. Um, you know what? Um, this is all kind of improv right now, but we do need to take a few more. <laughs> we need to take a few more minutes um, and uh, and and let another video clip uh, does. In the meantime, you know, smoke a joint or hit a bong or maybe if you're not even doing that, it doesn't really matter. Um, I don't know what you're doing right now, but whatever you're doing, uh, you know. <laughs> You can take a break if you want to. Um, <laughs> and uh, this, this next a while back, they were they were actually in the Quiet Riot video, um, oh, fuck yeah. the Young and the Wild. You know, like because like at the time that you know there was a lot of censorship going on. There's they were labeling the CDs and stuff like that. And there's this one video, Quiet Riot does um, the the Young and the Wild, and it's got Wink Martindale's in the beginning, and you know does this whole you know, it's, and it's kind of got got it's sort of like anti millinery military, and um, the two women uh, in the video were was a woman named um, Mimi, uh, Mimi, um, uh, and their and Janet Stewart, and uh, uh, they were um, they were actually lovers. They were they would they were partners for like 36 years, and that one woman with the stove. Um, you know, smoking a cigar out of her mouth was um, was the lady that I she was my roommate for like about four years or so. Yeah, so um, just just throwing it there. So they were friends with Billy Idol, so there would be a picture of a signed autograph thing of Billy Idol. So there's like a whole full on circle Billy Idol thing going on. Anyway, you just said you wanted to get off of Billy Idol. And then... <laughs> I'm still talking about no, Billy Idol. Well, so Sasquatch, <laughs> Sasquatch, Sasquatch started again. But uh, if, if you ever really were on. Billy Idol, then it would be time for a white wedding. <laughs> <laughs> but Sasquatch is a new new artist, and I, I always love talking to um, to new have you know introducing new artists to uh, the show, and I, I also love knowing them uh, personally. And uh, I met Sasquatch at the dot com uh, show that we did a couple of weeks ago. It like was a, a couple lot weeks happened ago. in a couple hey, weeks. Shouts out to Travis McDonald and Stephen Barry. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> you know Stephen Barry who I vapor. We all know him. Teamwork, so, teamwork makes the dream work. He, teamwork makes the dream work. Teamwork, teamwork makes the dream work. Teamwork. Bang 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 bang. bang, 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 bang. <laughs> That's our little thing. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you guys have been conditioned or something. We Not have. Even. The Pop Lob theory. It's been on us. You your own little rap version of Cher's song, Bang Bang, He Shot Me Down. Uh, I'm down. Really good song. I'm down. I would. Make it a, a hip-hop version. Bang, I, bang. I, uh, I would. <laughs> well, you know, we have, a, you know, his, his Sasquatch is like, your stuff is really, really, it's different, it's unique, I like it, especially, he's the Sasquatch, um, you know, because he's a Sasquatch, um, you have a song called Fancy Panties, is it Fancy Panties? Fancy Panties, panties. Fancy, fancy Panties, panties. Okay, yes. like, and, and what's the story behind Fancy Panties? Well, the, how I wrote it, like, well, I mean, you like know, this, like, what it's, like, all about, it's yeah. literally, all Fancy Panties is about is just, just about me. In, a, in weird ways, like, uh, just, a little, weird just a little weird shit that I do, like, and it's just, it, it, but I put it in lyrical form, like, it's not really organized, like, that song is kind of a clusterfuck of just my ideas and metaphors and stuff that I wanted to come out of my head, so I just put it all together, and then, uh, the beat is actually originally from this artist named John Wayne, and I discovered him, like, four years ago, and I was, like, really, really influenced by his stuff, like, most of the stuff on my mixtape is a lot of influenced by a lot of different, like, stuff I've been listening to in the past couple of years, and, like, all the beats are from, like, different artists. And, like, it's just a mixtape, you know? So it's just something to, like, just promote and just show people that, like, hey, look, I'm right fucking here. And I've been here. And, uh, and then... There's, there's way more to come. There's gonna there. be way more to come. I'm actually working on my LP, too. Um, after this mixtape drops, I'm, like, gonna be working on my LP called Emerald, which should be dropping May 30th. Like, hopefully around then. That's where I set my, like, goal deadline is May 30th, so... 
Yeah, so that, that all that will be actually produced by Caterpillar Face, who is actually sitting here like with the camera right now. Like Caterpillar does. Face. Caterpillar Face. If it wasn't if it wasn't for him, I would not be doing music right now. Like it all started with me like crashing on his couch like a year ago, and it all worked out. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah, and I, I, I kind of like would like to get into like the story of how you guys, how we all connected, because I'm always fascinated by that. But I do. Do we have time to? I, I like to play uh, Casper. Is there a way that we can play the the fancy panties? Um, uh, um. Uh, Jerry Joy. Yeah. I'm concerned you are the second queen of the network. We know who the real queen is. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do whatever you want, whenever you want, however you want, however long you want, whenever you want, anytime you like. Yeah. Oh well, thank you. Uh huh. You know, I'm not really a fan of the monarchy, though. But I mean, I, I guess it's okay to be referenced in the. Well, that's all right. If you don't want to be queen, here's the deal. Then we'll do what I want. Never gonna go to commercial break. Never gonna listen to sketch stuff. Oh no, I do want to be queen. I do want to be queen. I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be queen. I'm fine with being sure. queen. Yeah. If it means I'm going to get shit, I'll be the queen. All right, you're going to be the queen now. Whatever you want to do, ma'am, the, the, the world is at your fingertip. <laughs> you want to hear fancy panties? I do, I do. I want to hear fancy panties. Well, here's the song Fit for a Queen by Satchy Watch called Fancy Panties. Here on Times for Hems. On the telephone and the Oh. Tell you Machiavelli. Machiavelli. <laughs> yeah, I am watching my foot. I've been watching that thing the whole night. <laughs> I do not want to do that again. Next time we'll have to plug it in on the other side. Well, there is a next time. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll like be in the other room next time. Oh yeah. That shit goes hard, dude. Just like one of my like. One of my favorite written songs I've like written, just like metaphorically speaking. Like, well, okay, no, part of that song I wrote, like, that was a fancy pants, a fancy, no, it's not over with yet. <laughs> yeah, no, that beat rides. I, I ride that shit. I ride the coach tail. Right. Fancy panties. Hello, fancy panties. yes, that was fancy panties, and that was really wonderful. I really, so, I really like that. We are uh, actually. I guess we can just be back now. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, if if you want to, if you want to kind of talk for a moment, I can like 
look for like um another another video or two. See, here's the deal. This is this is how like how this is um going tonight is uh you know, but it doesn't matter. This I think this is like I'm always saying like you know the mistake of things sometimes makes the things more interesting. You hope. I mean, you know, it, we're we're kind of just here with our heart, like going, you know what? We're we're gonna make this happen. We want to take. Um, we want to take the patient advocacy network to the next level. Um, you know, there there have been uh, tougher times lately, um, and uh, you know the the normal um, me the past methods of, of how um, how we you got supported um, seems to be uh, in distress. And so, you know, we are we are really reaching out to people to, you know, um, come on board and you know get involved with um, with cannabis prohibition. Get involved with. Uh, with with um, how you know we, it, it 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 takes all of us to 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 join in and, and say you know what um, this is not okay you know this is you know I, I you know th this plant has been illegal for many 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 years and um, and now is the time that it needs to uh, come back and uh, it's a medicine for people it's a it's a textile um you know hemp you know it, it it's it's new jobs it's a new beginning it's food it's alternative health it's it's just recreational use um you know i i know that i mean well, just think about like when prohibition with alcohol was you know i mean the the boom of of business that happened for people um that didn't stay in the in the select hands of of criminals and government right so uh, make a donation at uh, at uh, you know cannabissavelives.org, and I need to stop talking um, and find like the next video. <laughs> but you know this is I mean we're you know this is how much we 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 care about what we do. We got good things on the horizon horizon happening. What are some of the stuff that are going on out there, DJ? Well, I mean it's it's a really really exciting. Year, which is why I'm, I'm really looking forward to reaching out to your audience, you know, now and on an ongoing basis, because I think they're going to be really intrigued uh, about what's going on. Uh, for one, uh, I like for, for, for people to uh, go visit this website, mclr.us. MCLR stands for Marijuana Control Legalization and Revenue Act. This is... Um, most likely going to be the uh, next cannabis law in the state of California. It, it's been uh, an exciting time. Um, I'm a proponent of this initiative. I got involved several months ago, kind of by accident, uh, and it was because um, am I am I am missing out of the picture? No, you're in the um, picture, um, uh, but you're it, it's it's not as as prominent. Um, but you're still there. I think I could even probably make it even better. Hold on. I think I think I might I think I might have solved something in in, in a moment. Bear with us, people. No problem. Um, so, I'm gonna go yeah, like so, this. Um, I got involved with this several months ago, kind of by accident. By um, of course I was very uh, interested in the language of the initiative, uh, how this legally was gonna play out, and I wanted to make sure that as uh, many of the lawyers that I've worked with over the years who have had different civil and criminal issues that they've tried to resolve in the court that have been really tricky, that we did everything we possibly could. We put everything in there we, we could possibly ask for. Uh, the other great thing about this initiative is it's the first of its kind open source document drafted by the people initiative Mm -hmm. um, this group called Save Cannabis, people can find them at savecannabis.org. Um, they can go there and learn more about them. And what they did is they created basically an on-source Google document, and they started with basically a couple brief paragraphs, something very similar to what Proposition 215 was, just a really short uh, initiative. And they just created an, a huge email list and encouraged people to get involved with the drafting of the initiative. And what it really was was a chalkboard of everybody's ideas of how to deal with DUIs, how to deal with child protective services, how to deal with employment issues, housing issues, how to really make it illegal so you don't go to jail for marijuana, period. 
you know, what, what is everything we had to um, look at to make that happen. In addition to um, people who are very active in the, in the cannabis community, uh, Save Cannabis reached out to every concerned citizen uh, and asked them to weigh in, uh, asked lawyers to weigh in, kind of pushed them to put their two cents in. And about nearly 30 lawyers did. And finally, the, the catalyst was the Riverside decision. And for uh, your viewers who um, might not have heard about this California State Supreme Court opinion that basically said that um, municipalities have the right to draft a ban, to enact a ban on medical marijuana dispensaries. And this has been an issue in some of the more hostile communities that we've had that instead of regulating it, instead of at least allowing a couple or even experimenting with it or a moratorium or something, some communities just wanted to go for an all-out ban, and it did trigger some lawsuits, and it went all the way to the California Supreme Court. And once that opinion came down, nobody wanted to wait for 2016 anymore. And this was, this is what other, the, the conglomerate of uh, marijuana policy orgs have been telling California voters and telling California donors we can't go until 2016 and save cannabis and those 800 plus people who put their voice behind that initiative aren't saying we need to wait until 2016 we need to go now and, and um, we've submitted language to the Secretary of State uh, we've submitted two versions um, one, one that was great and one that's now even better. Uh, and the, the first one we submitted um, was released a couple days ago and the media picked up on it um, because there, of course, the, the media pays attention to uh, what's coming and going out of uh, the Secretary of State's office. And the, the media was already very favorable uh, about the way it was uh, announcing it as a marijuana legalization effort, effort cleared to start gathering signatures um, legalizes adult recreational use, tax dollars would go to education, um, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, already, and, and like I said, that's not the version we're going to circulate. We, uh, it's a whole process with uh, putting a voter initiative on the ballot. But after we submitted it to the Secretary of State, uh, it then goes to the Legislative Analyst's Office. And that office is who is going to write the title and summary that will then get approved by the Attorney General. And the there's a time for what's called the legislative review. And the legislative analyst got back to us and basically had some questions. And, and the question is basically yes or no. Did you intend for this passage to do this or not do this? Because this is confusing, this is unclear, this is this. and. I mean, it doesn't mean you can't submit it like that, but the, the legislative analyst is going to let you know if you've got some potholes in your legislation and you've got an opportunity to go fix them. And so that's exactly what we did. There were some things that were a little unclear, some things that the, that we even thought after we looked at it, like, yeah, that is, they're right, that is unclear. And we fixed it. We've, we've made this law even stronger. And so that second revision is the one that's going to be uh, coming down here in the next few weeks and we'll be able to start gathering um, the signatures that we need for it. It's a, a, a little over uh, 500,000 valid signatures that we need to gather in order to get this on the ballot for November uh, 2014 so that um, provisions of this can be implemented as early as January 1st, 2015. There's no time to wait. Um, if people go to my website, and sign up for email updates. One of the things they're going to get are news digests that are going to tell them everything going on around the state, the country, the world with medical science uh, and, and, and even entertainment uh, around marijuana. And <clears throat> for those who've been paying attention, uh, marijuana legalization is polling well over 50% for the first time in American history. Even my home state of Indiana uh, is the, the population there is saying uh, tax it and regulate it like alcohol. Um, the, 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 the interesting thing that we had happen today in California on the heels of the Secretary of State releasing our initiative for, with approval is uh, our Attorney General 
was interviewed um, by uh, the San Francisco Chronicle, and uh, Kamala Harris said that marijuana legalization would save California hundreds of millions of dollars just in the criminal side alone, because she's, she, uh, she's our top cop, and she comes from the criminal angle with this, and she said that the, the, the money it would save with the courts and the jails would save California hundreds of millions of dollars, and that's huge. So, yeah, legalization is around the corner, and that's another reason why people um, should donate and get involved with CannabisSavesLives.org, because one, I'm one of the proponents of this initiative. Uh, I'm going to be a driving force behind training and educating all the grassroots activists that are going to need to help us make this happen. And uh, I definitely need your support because legalizing marijuana is, is very important right now. Um, people can always go and uh, visit us at our, at our Twitter um, and, and follow us there. It's PAN for Compassion, P-A-N, Patient Advocacy Network for Compassion. And what I post there uh, on a regular basis is whatever the most up-to-date breaking news is. Um, so if there's something really urgent, I will put it on the Twitter. Other than that, I will put together a news digest and send that to people as an email. We do not sell people's email addresses. We don't share anything. People's information is always confidential. Uh, with us at the Patient Advocacy Network. We, we treat people the way we want to be treated. So, um, yeah, when people sign up for email uh, updates, they're only going to be <clears throat> getting uh, emails from me. And uh, I don't, I don't hit pe maybe I don't hit people enough with emails. I don't know. Uh, I try to not uh, hit people all the time. I, I just try to send people digests and, and news alerts when, when they're available, when, you know, when, when it's important. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is definitely... Uh, an important time for us because like like I said we're here at the end of the year we've just got a really really small shortfall um, I want to talk a little bit if I can here if I've got a little bit of time I want to talk about access of love okay um, because some of this shortfall that we're raising this twenty seven hundred dollars is also helping what what we do there and I, I may have mentioned that um, I kind of came into doing this um, work in medical marijuana here in California uh, from my background as a social worker and I was working uh, for a cannabis collective as their social services director and this was up in the Bay Area. It's a very busy area. There are a lot of uh, low-income people in need and fortunately I happened to just step into a, a dispensary, Berkeley Patients Group. Shout out to Berkeley Patients Group. Um, they already had a social service program in place um, somewhat and they had a social service vision they just didn't have anybody uh, to run it. And that's what I came in and stepped in and did. And along the way, uh, Shona Gokenauer, who was just uh, on the other side of the, the bridge there uh, in San Francisco, learned about what I was doing and what I had uh, was created kind of under the roof of a dispensary. And uh, uh, I kind of, you know, indirectly inspired her. Does she, I'd hate, I hate to cut you off uh, for a moment, but you know, you are getting a lower bar signal of, of sound. Um, is, is your friend, um, it, 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 is he watching the, the live stream at all still? Yes. Um, the, can, can, and I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just doing it because I want to make sure that people actually really hear what, you, what you're saying. I don't want anything to be really be missed. Um, did, can he hear you okay? Is it, how, how's, how's her, how's her, your sound coming out? Are we loud and clear? Our, our volume is still low. Yeah, he says that I'm still my my volume is still. Low. I think I think you know when you speak louder, your volume gets higher. I think maybe how close are you to to the microphone in your computer? Um, no more than about sixteen inches. Yeah. See, when you talk louder, your bar. I think I think you need to bring your voice up. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, that's now. it. You're you're hitting it now. Okay. Okay. Um, so she was inspired to start a social service program and and with the the hopes of not having to maybe you even need to lean in a little bit more maybe you, well, like like you know just yeah um she was she was okay. hoping to do this so that she did not have to um do it inside of the home of a dispensary because as we know California has been very battle torn 
um, with respect to the feds shutting down dispensaries. And, you know, we've had problems in Southern California uh, and even Central California with the local law enforcement and county uh, drug task forces shutting down dispensaries. So Shona wanted to create something that would not potentially be harmed or uh, shut down because it was inside of a dispensary. So um, she started um, providing many of uh, some of the similar social services I had uh, going on in the East Bay, uh, plus things that were just pertinent to her particular community there. Uh, she does things with veterans. She does things with the transgender community. Uh, she does things with the AIDS community, cancer community. They have a lot of different support groups and education groups going on at the center. Um, they, they feed people. They have a food pantry, clothing pantry. Um, a couple other grassroots activist organization have their office there at the community center. And it's not a dispensary. They, they do not sell medicine there. Uh, they give it away. These people have to be a member. Um, there's a membership agreement for um, being a member of the clubhouse and there's rules and so forth and these people get their medicine donated for free. Shona has found ways to get medicine donated to Access of Love um, so that these people can have the medicine they need, they can have the quality of medicine that they need um, because you know Shona is a little outraged about how few collectives offer compassion and uh, how expensive uh, medicine can be and, and these low income people they, they can't afford it and so she's there to, to make sure that, that, that they get it that's wonderful, that's wonderful. Um, so, now so now I need to bring the volume down I, I kind of figure out what's going on when I talk I'm going to bring go lower and when you talk I'm going to bring it back up again <laughs> but well it, it, as we progress it's going to get better and better so, um, so yeah, that, that's what they do at, at Access of Love and so part of this $2,700 that we're trying to raise, uh, Shona's got uh, $200 of rent left to pay uh, at the center. And the other thing that Shona does every month, if people are looking for a really great monthly um, social service cause to, to participate in, she, get, she does a dinner once a month, uh, a free dinner at the end of the month, near the end of the month for uh, low-income people to come get a hot meal and take home a lot of leftovers with them and uh, they have some type of giveaway as well at the end of the dinner whether it's socks or cleaning supplies or toothpaste and toothbrushes or blankets or or jackets or something and she does this dinner once a month and she says it runs her about five hundred dollars a month to do this month this uh, monthly dinner so she's got some of that to cover as well yeah, and, and wasn't she yeah. kind of in a, a little bit of a, in a rough spot where, you know, she's kind of a point where she needs at least two hundred dollars to keep keep her pl to to keep it open right now. So we right. we're not, you know, um, you know, we 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 are we have so much going on, but there's moments where, um, as an organization, um, we're in the red, and um, so and again, you know, we're we're not asking for much. We're actually asking for just twenty seven hundred dollars for right now, so we can get out of the red. And then we also have, you know, this is going to be YouTube. This is going to be out there. Who knows what when when in the when what time and what year you're actually wa you know watching this i mean you could be watching this video 10 years later and go oh my god you know what and then and then you know marijuana be legalized everywhere and okay whatever okay let's say maybe like you're watching this six months later and uh we're farther along we're not in the red anymore and we do more you know we have like we have little connectors like I've, I've linked this video to a bunch of other fundraisers and you can see where we're growing and developing and you realize that there's so much going on and you want to participate you know write that check write that twenty five hundred dollar check you know write right you know this is um a nonprofit, um, you know, it, it is tax deductible. Um, you know, you you know you know. Hey, you know, I mean, this 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 is the new business. I mean, and I'm saying I'm not just talking about marijuana, like the medicine, like pharmaceutical companies or whatever. This is just as huge. This is the hemp plant. This is you know industrial textile. This is food. This is hemp milk. This is you know medicine. This is recreational use because now you know we are in the United States. We do have two states that have legalized it for recreational use. I happen to live in one of those states right now. It's a very exciting time. As a matter of fact, Jay, there are. 
uh, six spots for stores to open up and over like over 150 clinics applied for those stores um, you know this is a, this is a new this is this is providing money for your family actually you're donating to your future and uh, if we think about that um, you know why do we put this what we you know hey if we could let's put those devices in our cars let's run our cars on hemp oil you know or, or you know other types of gases I mean let's take the money away from where we don't want to make money at let's stop doing the jobs that we have to be drug tested to do because <laughs> that sucks and uh, especially for marijuana I got stories about that but I won't I won't go in them tonight because we're focusing on this but um, you know tune into Hollywood Hemp to Sour on the Time for Hemp Network and iHeartRadio and you can you know follow me there too and follow DJ she'll be a guest sometimes but CannabisSavesLives.org and it does save lives we are talking about saving lives only about like our livelihood and the boosting of our economy and uh, you know the new the new the new hope is what I talk about I when when Obama said hope we, you we can believe in you know yeah this is the hope and that's why you know President Obama needs to like you know change some laws for us so anyway but let's do take a little bit of a break here for a moment um, and then come back with more and again you can designate your donation axes of love you know, anywhere that you want to put it at, you know, I mean, you can designate where you want this money we'll to go to. We're going to talk about Campaign 420 when we get back. We are. We're going to talk about Campaign 420, and this is this is, this is is where we take it to a national level. Uh, and uh, so we'll be right back. I want to show a video, um, Dejay, you know, I, I've been doing, when I do Hollywood Hemptress Hour, I I do the behind the scenes uh, with my um, cell phone uh, live streaming off my Android. And, um, and then also um, I do the broadcast on the Time for Hemp Network that goes out to iTunes and Spreaker and all those different uh, places. But I'm really loving the live stream, and um, I I got the chance to, to, to work with the Wu Tang Clan and also um, the Kush family. And you know, I thought how appropriate that there would be Kush involved, right? But it's not. It's actually the it, it's one of the late like first known um, African tribes in history. And of course, there is Kush related to that. But they're a family, and it's a tradition. So I got blunted by the Kush family. Um, I. Was was interviewing TV, who is um, part of I mean, the Wu Tang Clan. I mean, he's the new generation. And what's fascinating about hip hop is is that um, they pass on the wisdom uh, to the new youth and the to, to the new generation, and the new generation and it, I mean, it passes that wisdom. And I, I think I got to um, get a, a really candid uh, interview and a, and, a, and a peek at at what it's like at Dot Com Records. So um, we will and um, we'll be we'll be right back. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Thanks, oh, yeah. thanks for thanks for doing the show, oh, man. Yeah, no problem. I really appreciate anytime, it. Anytime. Pleasure. It's a pleasure for me being here. Um, you know, I, I, a little bit earlier, um, you were talking about, um, you know, that you were 25 and while you were, it was, it was fascinating because like I was you streaming it and I was filming you like rolling the blunt and uh you know uh and talking about 25 and that you're the, at the, the wisdom of of 25 and like passing on um you know the information or the wisdom to the generations that um are below us correct um can you can, i mean like i'd like to like i mean i, I know i'm saying what you told me but it, you, if you can maybe say something on that to the listener yeah. that might be out there The listeners out there, the listeners out there, I would like to say, you know, for the future and the kids, stay in school and um, just stay on the right path. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all are future. You know what I'm saying? Like, if if y'all don't if y'all don't get everything in line right now, you know what I mean? Like all the stuff that y'all doing right now is it, like the, 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 the people that done did it before. They done did that. They done did that. They done been through. Then did what you done did, you know, and you you thinking that oh yeah it's all bad, you know, and yeah I'm probably like 16, 17, 18. You might be 18, 17. I'm talking to all of y'all, 13. You know what I'm saying? 12, all that, you know. Smoke weed. I know. I already know. You sneaking. You know what I'm saying? Trying to smoke weed and all that. Stop. Stop that. Go to school. You know what I'm saying? Education is the key. You can never stop learning. Knowledge is the key. When you stop learning, you're dead. So, you know what I'm saying? And knowledge is uh, uh, invincible. 
It's like the juggernaut. You can't stop it. You know what I'm saying? You can never stop learning, just like I said. And I'm going to keep on repeating it because it's what y'all need to do. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to stop all this uh, wanting to be gangsters and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? That's not the. That's not what is cool. That's not what's cool. That's not what's cool. You know what I mean? They don't. Gangsters don't. Don't. Uh. Uh. uh get uh, diplomas and stuff like that. They be ending up in jail and, and dead. That's the only two options you got. You want to be a gangster, that's the only two options you have. To be in jail or dead. Because you're going to get caught for selling something or doing something that you're not supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? And if you just avoid that and go to school, you know, and stay focused on what you're doing, then you'll see. You know, you'll, 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 you'll see. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. No yeah. problem. Anytime. I mean, thank I'm you. I'm vibing right now. Yeah. No yeah. Me too. And it that this is a uh, this is what's happening here. We're gonna like we're gonna listen to a little. We're gonna jam a little bit, and then I'm gonna say, hey, it's time for a commercial. But maybe nobody has to talk right now. We're just gonna jam. Miss Taylor, are you cuddling with the famous Hemptress? Oh. <laughs> we have Taylor here. TV and dot com records and Hollywood Hemptress, we're all here with you guys, and I really think it's a testimony to what weed can do and what music can do. You know what I'm saying? Because we you know we all sitting here, we came together, we love music, we love comedy, and we love weed, and we love people. So, what else do you need in life, man? All right, we're back uh, with uh, with Hollywood Hem Hollywood Hemptress Hour and Gondra uh, the Gondra Thon. Um, you know what? You know, this is still not perfect science yet, but you know that was the video. I started a little bit late, so I kind of went back to the front. 
apparently we do have like 37 people following us or watching the show right now so we thank you very much for uh for tuning in and uh listening to the uh, to the ganjathon and and again you know we're going to um upload this to youtube um where can i mean you can find uh pa patient advocacy network at cannabissavelives.org you can find um find us on facebook um you know holly hemptress hour on facebook you know uh, keep keep in touch with us um you know and you know share our videos um share let people know about us uh let your friends know let your rich friends know that have a bunch of money and don't know where to put it at um if they want to put it to good use and and for 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 change for social change and 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 it, making a difference you know um cannabis saves lives .org. um support us uh support sexy pan women changing the law i mean what sexy women changing the law yeah what you were talking about before the video well, as the importance to our economy that we change these laws. And that's that's another place where we're at with this, Terry, is that donating to good activism is an investment in our future. Yes. Um, Nation Advocacy Network wants to get this done. Into the weird screen. Can you put that back in the screen again? I actually put the wrong... I, I, clicked, I was trying to get rid of something and I actually clicked onto it, so that wasn't the thing to do there. Um... So this is um, the, uh, the the 420, uh, the, the, what we're going to, like, tell us yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, we'll talk more about that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so, you know, what we did is... Um, Oops. ...people and uh, train people on how to uh, talk with their congressional members, how to not just get involved on a local level. I mean, we taught a lot of people on how to go to City Hall and how to go to their county commissioners and get involved in their neighborhood associations and things of that nature. Um, and then we, we took some time to teach people how to uh, make an appointment to meet with their congressional member's office and even how to make an appointment with their congressional member uh, when the uh, that congressional member, when that representative comes home for constituent visits. And we learned a lot. We, we learned quite a bit when it came to visiting with our uh, Congress members. And one of the things that I learned and really stuck out with me is that not enough of us on an individual basis are picking up the phone or sending an email or making an actual visit in the local district office to our congressional members. Um, when, I, when I met with uh, Lynn Woolsey and uh, um, Nancy Pelosi's office and, and others, um, you know, what we were hearing over and over again is that the number of people going into these offices to talk about what's going on in Afghanistan, what's going on with education, uh, what's going on with the economy and other things were far, far outshadowing the number of people uh, coming in to talk about medical marijuana. And, you know, in many cases, we were the first time that a constituent had actually bothered to show up for a constituent visit. And when congressional members are home for a constituent visit, it's not a chill experience like when you sometimes go into an elected official's office to meet with somebody. When they're home for constituent visits, there's a line out the door in the parking lot to see this person, and you have usually 15 minutes or less FaceTime with the congressional member to talk about your issue and you're out. And, uh, um, you know, we were being told that of that line of people, we were the only people who, uh, you know, followed the appropriate channels to set the appointment to have that FaceTime with them. And that's when I knew we are going to have to educate people on how to do it. If, if every single person who believed that marijuana should be legal told their congressional member that they felt that way, we would get movement very, very quickly. Um, and that's basically all it takes. People don't have to wait until election day to vote. We can vote every day by sending a letter or making a phone call or getting an email. There's, there's a whole process to the most effective ways to engage um, your congressional member's office. We teach people how to do that. And that's what we, we launched with the Campaign 420. We've put together educational materials uh, to teach people how to make this contact, 
we think it's very important that people do this on a local level, get used to visiting. They'll, they'll get to know you. Oh, hi, it's you. Uh, the great thing about the marijuana issue is there is constantly new news. When people go to our website, CannabisSavesLives.org, sign up for email updates, I'm going to send you literally hundreds of links to news stories, scientific articles, journals, things that are going on with marijuana all around the world that anyone could use um, to have continue the dialogue with your congressional member's office on this issue. Um, and then what uh, I was holding up uh, earlier, what I did uh, right after uh, President Obama was re-inaugurated for his second term is I pulled a rally permit to do a uh, do an event in front of the White House on 420 2014 and this is the uh, copy of what I submitted to the um, DC Metro Police Department to get permission to uh, rally on the street not the sidewalk sidewalk belongs to the Secret Service street belongs to the people so we'll be in the street and uh, uh, and and we, we need we need people's support so that we can invite every activist around the country to come to this and also to get them our educational materials on how they can invigorate the people in their community to be uh, talking with their congressional members. We have 50 members of the Senate, 435 members of the Congress. If everybody who believed in cannabis made that contact and made that connection. We have a video on our blog. Um, if people go to our, our blog, um, there's a video uh, of me visiting my, my local congressional member's office and dropping off a letter. Uh, one of the things I dropped off with my letter, this is something else that people will be able to find online if people want to get a hold of me. I'll, there's a digital copy of this. This is Pan's position paper. Um, we wrote and published this almost two years ago. And it discusses the conflict with uh, marijuana, medical marijuana, and the Controlled Substances Act. And it's not a very long position paper. It's very specific to what the legal problems are and what the potential solutions are. And what we what we advocate is that marijuana not be a controlled substance. It should not be a Schedule One through Five drug. It should be treated more. Um, like uh, beer, wine, and tobacco. Um, we want to see a future that instead of marijuana being uh, controlled by the DEA and the Drug Enforcement Agency, that uh, hemp and cannabis be treated more like a, a, a um, agricultural product. And instead of having, you know how firearms is already kind of branched off into, what is it, explosives and this and that, right? So move them over there and we'll have, you know, uh, alcohol, cannabis, and tobacco will become its own agency uh, within the government, and, and let's just get marijuana out of the Controlled Substances Act. There's no good place to put it anywhere in there because the way, well, people, a lot of people, and that's what we point out with certain passages of the law, what a lot of people don't understand is if you move cannabis from a Schedule One, which is where it is now, to a two through five, mm -hmm. growing it yourself and having a dispensary is still federally illegal. You don't stop the problem of the DEA conducting federal interference. It just means that it, it's recognized for having therapeutic value. You can't go to jail for possessing a small amount, but you cannot manufacture it, and you're gonna have to go to Walgreens and you do have to get a tablet prescription for it. You do have to be a pharmaceutical company to produce it, or a university, or something of that nature. You're, you know, The mom and pop dispensary in the backyard garden doesn't exist in the Controlled Substances Act. So, you know, again, uh, what we're educating people on, and the, what we did with this position paper is we presented the problem and we presented the solution, um, because that's what Congress wants to hear. Um, so our, our position paper is there, again, um, our, one of our um, uh, late great board members, Richard Kearns, who passed away, his um, bio is still on our website. Uh, but he I'm actually wearing his jacket tonight, by the way, and the, the, the jacket, jacket that he gave me. So it's like so Richard, Richard is with us. So CannabisSavesLives.org. And um, I don't know, DJ, do you want to let our, um, let our viewers know a little bit who Richard was and uh, what he did? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Richard, dear, dear spirit, um, 
I'm, he was one of the very first people I met when I moved to LA. Uh, a little background on me is doing marijuana activism in Indiana. Uh, with some really great people. Shout out to Steve Dillon and, and, and uh, Dana York. And um, was working with Indiana Normal. I met these people. They immediately voted to put me on the board. Uh, they immediately made me the education director. And I immediately put together an educational conference for them at Purdue University. Um, not too long thereafter, uh, I ended up moving to California, which kind of was uh, an accidental thing. And uh, accidentally got married and moved to California, and I re remedied that. You I accidentally got married. Yeah. Um, <laughs> once by accident. Um, I slipped. Ended up, here, ended up here in California, and because of what I was doing in, in, in Indiana, I immediately um, was able to land a job, like I said, doing the social um, work there in the Bay Area, and um, did that for a couple years. And what I realized was that um, uh, that the, the fight was going to be in Los Angeles. Uh, the Bay Area was not short on activists. The Bay Area was not um, short on people who were ready and mobilized and active to take on what needed to be done with local legislation. And But uh, it seemed like L.A. was at least a good decade behind the Bay Area with respect to where they were with taking care of, you know, and regulating dispensaries. So without really a second thought, I packed up and moved down here and put together a statewide group of advocates and, and founded this organization and began educating people all throughout Southern California on how to protect their safe access because it's more conservative down here in Southern California and like I said, everyone was poised and ready to ban dispensaries when I first moved down here. Uh, and myself and others started going around to different city council meetings all throughout Southern California, Santa Barbara, uh, San Bernardino, Riverside, San Diego, uh, Anaheim, uh, Santa Ana. And, and Richard, when he felt well enough, uh, he would go to these and he would speak and he was very, very compelling. And the reason Richard was very compelling, and I hope people will go to our website, Cannabis Saves Lives, and um, click on the, the, the directors and look at Richard Kearns. Richard Kearns was what he acknowledged as a mediagenic patient. He looked ill. Um, he would always start every time he spoke before a public body with, my name is Richard Kearns, I'm a whatever year old man, uh, gay man, living with AIDS in Los Angeles. And uh, I say whatever age because it was whatever it was that year. And, you know, he lived to be uh, 60 uh, before he passed. And he contracted AIDS in the 80s. And this man watched everyone around him, everyone he was close to and everyone he loved, die of this disease. And he, you know, he really felt like the last man standing. And he took it very seriously that he was supposed to go out there as an AIDS patient and advocate that people like him look at him he needs this. Do not shut these places down. You have to work with me. You have. I am a constituent. I am somebody who needs this. I'm one of the few people brave enough to get out here and tell you that. So please don't ban these places. And between he and I going out there to these places and, and a handful of other of us, we were able to stabilize safe access in, in, in Southern California for a while. Of course, now until the Riverside decision and the fix of the Riverside decision is going to be this initiative right here. That's right. And that and so and and how can you help us with that initiative? You go to cannabissavelives.org and um and 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 get, you know, and 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 support us with a donation um, because you know, DJ's right in the forefront of of making that happen. Um I I loved Richard uh, Kearns. Um you know, I he was a poet and I you know, he was a, he was a wonderful artist and we were actually at one point going to maybe do it a um a program where um, I, you know, I, I would maybe be like a mentor, and um, you know, other AIDS patients that wanted to bring humor into their experience, and then do a comedy night at the. Uh, we and we almost, I, I, I kind of had it an end to do it at the Laugh Factory, and then some sub, sub stuff stuff happened, and 
health issues, I think, and things like that, and didn't got didn't got get didn't get off the ground that way. But I really do uh, cherish my times with him. The one thing that I do remember about Richard was, um, you know, we we when we were doing Dejay and I, we'll talk about that a little bit later. We we did a medical marijuana float for the Gay Pride Parade, um, first float that ever you know went down Gay Pride Parade ever. But um, Richard was it was really dear to his heart to 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 have this float go down that day. But we would go to the meetings at Dee Dee's house and. Um, I had one of my cars that I had. It had it, 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 power steering fluid was going out or whatever, and I was just like cranking. It, and it was also like it, it was um, stick, so it wasn't. It was on. So I was, I was cranking and going back this way, that way, that way. And then all of a sudden, I finally parked it, and and then and Richard goes, "How butch of you." <laughs> And I always just thought that that was just the, so funny. Like, I, I can't forget that. You know, how, how butch of you. And I'm like, and I kind of felt proud. Like, I go, yeah, I know, huh? <laughs> that truck was pretty butch. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was It was definitely, uh, you know, it, it was definitely for a girl who wasn't going to take any shit or crap right. off of anybody. It's like, <laughs> no, Richard, Richard was constant wisdom. That was Richard. Richard constantly had wise and wonderful things to say and to, to share with us and yeah he's one of the founding board members of PAN um, he, he's a lot of the spirit of why I uh, uh, did what I did when I founded the organization and why I continue to do what I do now and um, you know Richard and I were very very close as you know I was there with him all the way into the very end the last six weeks of his life I stayed with him there at the hospital just about every day and I made sure I was there until he took his very last breath and, um, you know, cleaned out his care home and held his memorial and his ashes are, you know, his urn is here in, in his memorial library is here in Pan's office. Yeah, um, you know, I really, <coughs> I remember because we were part of, we were part of the memorial together and we really got to read some of his poetry publicly and, and, um, you know, had it, had a poetry slam afterwards and, and, uh, it was really, it was really, really beautiful. Um, it, it was, it was a wonderful uh, experience. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I guess, I, and I would say like, I, we'd rather have him be alive. You know, like, oh, it, was be, it was a wonderful experience. Too bad he couldn't make it. But I'm, I didn't mean it may sound like that. But no, no, it was yeah, a you wonderful know, experience. I mean, it was, it was, it was a beautiful experience. I think it's, it was a beautiful no, memorial. Really, to this day, I still have people who tell me that it was the most beautiful memorial they'd ever went to. It was unique. They'd never seen anything like it. Uh -huh. there, were, there were city <laughs> council members from Los Angeles and the city of West Hollywood uh, that showed up for that. Richard Richard was recognized in the city for his, uh, you know, what he called his uh, poet journalism and activism. Um, the Brown Act here in California allows people to speak for at least two minutes during a public comment period on anything that the governing body is going to vote upon. And he would take that two minute public comment time and he would draft a poem that was pertinent to the issue that exactly fit within the two minute time frame. So he became like this master of the, of the two minute, what he called Brown Act poetry. And it, it was compelling and it, it really, um, it really moved the the Los Angeles City Council with some of the things that he did. So, yeah, wonderful, wonderful person. That that's just a small fraction of who he is. Um, like I said, his bio is on our website, and I believe his bio also has a link to his obituary. And his obituary lists uh, all his writing credentials. He he's a he's like won fiction awards for his novels and, and things back in his younger years so just a real phenomenal person the real phenomenal life um just real honored that he uh, helped me find found um a patient advocacy network it was why i chose this domain name because i was witnessing before my very eyes that using cannabis was prolonging richard's life he said that cannabis helped him live an extra seven years with aids and you know, I, I feel that, that that's that's very prevalent that uh, cannabis has has really um, helped the AIDS community, and I feel that that's one of the reasons why. I mean, if you look at it, you know, the, the city of West Hollywood, um, you know, played a part in um, you know uh, Proposition Two Fifteen. I've I've gone to some of their councils, uh, city council meetings, when they were working on zoning um, for because you know, like there's a there's a dispensary there called the pharmacy, and the pharmacy is actually um, you know they're too close to a school. They're actually they're 
not really in the right guidelines. But you know, the um, we I actually was there to speak on their behalf, and there and I watched them how they conducted. Um, they are very supportive of the medical marijuana laws. They were part of making the laws happen in in, in Proposition Two Fifteen, and um, they are um, it, you know they and, and I think a lot of it has to do with the AIDS uh, how how they know there how how good uh, cannabis is for AIDS patients and you know and then people who have cancer and and it, it literally does I mean literally it we we know that it saves lives um, so no, it definitely helps people yeah you know um, you know unfortunately you know just thinking of about the situation like um, you know as you know my mom just recently very recently had surgery on her spine mm -hmm. and while she is feeling relief from the actual uh, relief that from the surgery she's having an incredible amount of pain at the actual surgical point and so of course they're giving her Vicodin and her body's tired of the Vicodin so she's throwing it up and all I can think is damn if I could just you know get her to smoke some weed but she's of course in Indiana and uh, you know but it, it lets you know that when you've seen people in that situation where they can't keep down their pills uh, whether it be their pain pills or whatever that cannabis is a wonderful anti nauseant and it also makes the pain pills work more effectively. Those pain pills would kick in and she would knock out and she'd feel better in another 48 hours. So, DJ, I want to take just a little mild break. Um, we are actually at the um, 147 mark on our on our on our, our drive. And before we do, let's just one more time, um, you know, give a shout out to um, our listeners about making a donation. Are we still giving away? Are you still are we, are you still interested in doing the um, vaporizer for a higher donation? Sure. No, absolutely. I, I have this wonderful um, uh, vapor kit. I don't want to undo the thing. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like opening up a can of worms when you like try to unpack this thing. But I have a I have a good photo of it that I will be able to share with people here very shortly. Um, but it's one of the old school uh, kits that is uh, the the Steinel uh, heat gun with the digital thermostat and the ceramic heat core with the cage that you put on it and. Um, and then the traditional valve kit and bags that come with um, the uh, the volcano. So you can see the the Steinel heat gun set up there next to the box, and you can see the bag is 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 up there on top where it would get filled just like it would on a volcano. And yeah, I just I like the Steinel heat gun better because of the ceramic core and being able to choose the exact temperature you want to vaporize at. And in addition, the kit has all of the, um, it has all the um, concentrate screens and it has all the replacement parts and um, it's basically brand new. Um, I just, I unfortunately found out vaporizing just doesn't work for me. But, um, yeah, you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm, I'm similar. I mean, I, I, I seem to want to feel the burn. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. You know, there have been studies done, fortunately, um, where they've looked at the THC slash uh, CBD um, le uh, levels in different types of smoked marijuana. Uh huh. And, um, you know, they. It was actually uh, Dale Geringer of California Normal and um, a gentleman, I believe, oh, I hope I'm saying his name, I, I think his name is Richard Cowan. I hope I'm correct in, in that gentleman's name. They, they did a study like 10 plus years ago where they, they did, they looked at uh, vapor from, from a volcano, they looked at joint smoke, they looked at, um, I think, pipe smoke and bong smoke, like water bong smoke. and. Uh, what they found out was um, that the, the the joint seemed to be the favorable one for people with pain um, because it had this uh, had the highest CBD level, and either bong hits or vapor hits were best for people who were looking for the high THC content. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, you know, uh, the but vaporizers they say is is the best way to take it in terms of like lungs and if your lungs are I heard that are compromised. I mean, doctors seem to like recommend vaporizers. Um, it doctors seems like doctors are never ever going to approve of smoke. Right. Okay. 
that's what the American Medical Association just came out straight out and said. We will never approve of a smokable medicine. And so yeah, they're gonna they're gonna approve of it in pill form, tincture form, or you know, topical form, suppository form, um, things of that nature, and vaporizing. But they're not gonna doctor is not gonna write you a script for a blunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then they go go ahead and get blunt and take two get blunt take take two blunts take and two call blunts. me in the morning <laughs> yeah uh you know that's so true well you know um, we're going to take a really quick break here this is just a, a, a little a comedy piece um this is um sergeant detective harry palmer jr uh, retired and um this is um something about um uh, you know, I like I I wanted well. It's it's asking him um, about his expertise on the um, new Washington marijuana laws. So uh, this is Sergeant. Yeah, and while people are watching it, they could click over to cannabissavelives.org and click hit that donate button. I don't care if it's ten dollars, twenty dollars, twenty seven hundred dollars is going to add up very very quickly if everyone pitches in a little bit. That's all we ask for. Absolutely. Surprise you, Terry. <laughs> what is that? I smoked marijuana before the show. You did? Yes, I did. Uh -huh. I wanted to find out what the effects would be if I came on to a television show under the influence of the marijuana. And since we are filming here in the state of Washington, it is legal, and I have no problem with that. I had to find out what would happen. I well, came actually, on to I don't want to surprise you, but, but we're really not in the state of Washington. Wait a minute, what? <laughs> yeah, we're not in Washington. <laughs> oh hey, my God. he's going to get busted. Isn't that classic? No, I will not be busted oh, yeah. if I will be turning it's myself in. Fact, we're going to call, but I'm going to get like, hey, Please. Rupert Decklow, let's call right now. Please I'm, do. I'm, I, okay. I should Thank be punished so much. because of what I've done. It's illegal, and I... And you should, and I'll spank you, I should you pay too. the price. I will spank you, well, now, you should be punished. I was told that, that you would be coming on to me sexually. They warned me ahead of time. They said something about you and men with mustaches. <laughs> they said perhaps you'd like to remove no, your costume. I thought they were trying to trick that's me. That's men with real mustaches, not fake ones. I All right. still have my lower so, mustache. So the man if you know that I'm with doesn't choice. have to like disguise himself because he's embarrassed to like be associated with marijuana at all. You don't like role play then, no, I guess. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> you don't want any costumes? <laughs> we'll do it. You know what? That's Bear back if you want to. I'll show you no costumes. All right. Thank you for thank you for watching uh, listening to. Doc I want to thank our guest, uh, Doctor Detective Sergeant Detective. That does not no, sound sincere. No, I want. You you're not sincere. really thanking me. I want to thank this man. You brought me here to make fun of me. I am, and stay tuned. I we'll be right back. I feel been flim flam. Can we get a car down here? Hello, it's the Weather Channel. I don't know how to get a. In that Texas town, right the shack outside the game. And you know what I'm talking about. Just let me know if you wanna go to that whole mound on the range. They got a lot of nice girls. Huh? Yeah, man. 
don't know about you, but I feel that mainstream television isn't really telling me all of the truth. I mean, it looks like journalism with opinions, or opinions and no journalism. You take your pick. For example, anybody who speaks out against gun control or seems like they're part of the NRA is depicted as being completely irrational, or they choose to focus on those who seem irrational or have eccentric personalities. For example, Ted Nugent. Would you actually let him babysit your kids? Probably not. Although, I might have coffee with them. We are back, actually. That was not Sergeant Detective Harry Palmer, Jr. Um, that was actually um, a, 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 a some videos that I made about um, the uh, current uh, gun control laws. And I did do one, like, complete episode about what, what kind of fascinates me, DJ, about, about the gun control issue is um, that you cannot, um, you know, possess marijuana and have uh, firearms at the same time. And so, like, what does that happen when you're a patient? And that was like one of the, you know, that was one of the things that, you know, we, because we did Occupy 420, um, you know, DeJay and I were involved with, you know, um, with um, circulating petitions there. I actually camped out there and worked in the media department. The whole um, phrase Occupy 420 came about and, and this, what, you know, there's one day we were protesting for patients' rights. <coughs> it was when the coal memorandum came out and and uh, we, 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 we went in front of the federal building and, um, you know, all these, you know, police officers were going by us and going to arrest a monk that, you know, spoke at the Occupy, uh, and uh, that's part of the montage, you know, some of those pictures are in the montage, the opening montage that we did, um, and uh, DeJay, like, in her bullhorn, in front of, like, CBS and everything, um, she she says, like, a, 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 a twist on the uh, Charlton Heston uh, line, and if you could just, like, you know, throw that out there um, for our viewers right now. What, what was it? You know, I, I loved it. I, 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 wanted, I started to laugh right there to myself and go, oh, my God. Okay, so, yes. Yeah, well, you know, we were, we were out there for, like you said, there was, um, we were doing what we called uh, an, an emergency action, and that's to, to have a, a rally and protest along with other sister organizations around the state when the feds threaten uh, safe access. And we had this coal memorandum, and we also had statements that came from uh, U.S. Attorney Melinda Hag and others, um, and that's the reason we were gathering signatures, is these U.S. attorneys uh, at the behest of the United States Ju D Department of Justice were standing on our governor, Jerry Brown's lawn in Sacramento, basically saying, we're gonna shut down every, every dispensary in the state of California. So that was like one of the, the, the reasons for the protest. The other memo that came down wasn't just from James Cole, there was another separate memo that came down from the ATF. And this was the memo that was basically reminding the attorney generals of states with medical marijuana laws, um, again, going back to marijuana being a con uh, in the Controlled Substance Act, that it's a controlled substance, and therefore, um, people who get the get any type of marijuana ID card uh, should not also be allowed to get a, a gun permit in that state. And um, fortunately, I, and I, I can't say I know exactly where that court case has led, uh, but God bless the people of Montana, they sued. <laughs> and uh, uh, it'd be interesting to see where that went. But yeah, I made mention of that as well because that's what happens when you you tell somebody that they can't protect their family that they're a second class citizen that um, they they can't have um, you know their their uh, second amendment rights it makes everybody involved with marijuana in any way a potential sitting duck for crime because a criminal is going to say oh these pot people they're not supposed to have guns they all of a sudden go in this list of like passive people that are going to be easy to target and rob uh, because we're not supposed to have firearms. So um, the, the Charlton Heston line that I decided to use out there in front of the federal building uh, where the DEA is and, and the jail and so forth in downtown Los Angeles was that the, the government will take my gun and my joint from my cold dead hands. And um, the, the, the reaction from the, uh, 
the the CBS cameraman was he was pretty shocked. He was like, "Wow." She just said that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. I mean, no, it, it's it's uh, it was a really a really scary. But she thing said it person. really loud in a bullhorn, and it was very you know, call her, you know. She was like, you know, it, you know, like like, like she. I mean, she was she was like really <laughs> telling like you know telling that you know, telling them you know do you we she was she like DJ was like you know she this visualize her with a bullhorn you know and uh and and uh. Yeah, and then I saw the cops come and I go, oh my god, they're going to arrest us now. We're going to be arrested for, you know, protesting for marijuana for the federal building. <laughs> well, you know, when Charlton Heston would do that, he'd usually have a rifle in his hand holding it over his head. You know, if I could have had, like, a rifle and a giant J and my bullhorn, that would have been cool, but I definitely would have gotten arrested. Well, I mean, one of the things, and 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 again, I, you know, I, I don't think the gun issue is going to go away. It's 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 kind of like right in there. It, it's it's now. I, I feel like, like, okay, I used to feel that you know the gay initiative, the gay issue, and you know, uh, gay marriage and marijuana kind of went hand in hand. I mean, right now, like, you know, Washington, you know, legalized gay marriage and they le- legalized marijuana at the same time. And I and I and in a sense, they're kind of they they were neck and neck in in many ways. Um, I feel that um, still uh, marijuana is is behind on that, and again, you know, there's uh, like various reasons why it's more. You know, it, 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 of course, you know, it's a there's so many reasons why marijuana is in the position that it is, even though it's making a lot of headway. Um, but guns is now like the new the new thing um, I, I, in terms of you know them wanting to have their right to bear arms, you know, to protect the Constitution and the and the way it is. And and you know I I will admit I'm I'm not a gun person. I don't own a gun. Um, you know I, those guns I had in the photos they were not mine. You know I mean and and uh, I took those pictures not in California. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and my friend said, you know, because I have a new show coming out called Freedom of Choice on Revolution Radio, and, I, and I've been wanting to work that into, I'm working that into a one-woman show. Um, you know, I'm very interested about freedom and, and what those things mean to us collectively as a society and individually. And he goes, well, if you're really going to talk about freedom, then you're going to talk, you know, why don't you take some pictures with these guns? And it was, I want to give a shout-out to North Flat, uh, Forskin and Kevin Korn. But, um, you know, the reason why I do it is, um, you know, the only, the reason why we have the right to bear arms is to protect us if our government were to go out of control. And, you know, my feeling is, is and, 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 and I'm going to admit this right now, and this is how I became a, a marijuana activist. I became a marijuana activist because I was in a raid um, in a doctor's office by the FBI, by the feds, um, when they, um, and the DEA, when they raided a medical marijuana dispensary. But I wasn't even in the dispensary. I was actually in the doctor's office. And, um, you know, I thought, wow, first of all, I went, I voted for this. And, and, and I'm not even in the dispensary, and now you have a, you have a gun at me. At the same time, um, you know, the only time that I have had guns on me and I felt almost attacked was by my own government. Government. So, um, so I have. I'm definitely, um, you know, uh, I'm queasy and uneasy about um, about that right being taken away. Um, and uh, you know, I've, I've had people ridicule me. They go, you know, they'll be they'll be like, well, you know, why don't you just go join the Tea Party? And they make this all. They make it like a big Tea Party issue. And you know about Ted Nugent, and that's why that that Ted Nugent clip is there. I mean, like, I feel like. Just like with marijuana, you know, the mainstream media makes all people look like, you know, like 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 the radical. You know, they want to with the marijuana movement. They want to like, you know, um, photograph the person that's like dressed up in cellophane with marijuana all over them. You know, or or the or the nurses that are in vinyl and go look at those people. They're not. They're not. Are they serious about medicine? I mean, like, you know, we're it, it, there's always a slander, and so they're always going to take the the worst stereotype of what something is. I mean, like freaking like look at I mean, you know, again, I mean, you know, great. Ted Nugent is an entertainer. Okay? Okay, he's an entertainer that's, you know, that's, you know, and he's acting all wacky and everything when he talks. You know, it's not like he sits back and, like, you know, seriously talks and makes some points like a, like a normal person. No, he's all, ah, you know, hey, I'm going to run for president. You know, I'm like, no, no, you're not. You're not, you're not running for anything, you know. Uh, and so, 
I mean, it's not that you want to put them down, but it's like they, they use that personality and they go, "Look at these crazy gun people! Look at you, crazy Americans! We need to take, we need to take, we need to take your pot and your guns away." No, well, well, you can take my gun, but you know, can, can you still leave the pot? You know, <laughs> it's kind of like <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I would love to live in a world where guns were not a necessity. I mean, get this, DJ. But I I know a guy. Fortunate that you know, and I've just I've lived with a lot of military men in my family. You know, men who have been uh, and seen what the rest of the world is like. And, um, yeah, you know, we're, we're very fortunate, especially as women, uh, to live in the United States. And uh, as long as, um, you know, I continue to be, uh, have the freedoms I do, I do want to continue to exercise them. And I want to... Um, support and educate other people and how to protect their rights and you know have more freedom we need more freedom not less freedom <laughs> and uh that's you know that's what we do i mean that's that's what we're doing as activists that's what we were doing down at the occupation um after we left that protest there at the federal building it was very interesting after these federal memos came out uh, another um uh, another round of ban landlord threat letters throughout the state. Um, you know, we went on to um, watch other protests and events that were going on that day and made our way around to um, the occupation there in Los Angeles, um, o Occupy LA. And um, that was where we were breaking ground there um, with a little bit of the, the conflict and confusion that was going on there, there was conflict because there were definitely occupiers who were, who were smokers who were cannabis users and there was definitely this contingent that felt as though there was some type of um, obligation to follow the exact same rules that the, new, that the uh, Wall Street occupiers, the New York crew were uh, taking, which was they had a very strong no drug policy period. Now, New York State, New York City, not a, a medical marijuana community, you know, they don't have medical marijuana laws there, they don't have adult recreational laws or anything like that there yet in New York. Um, and, you know, you have also have the dynamic of a big city like New York. So I could see where, given their laws, that, um, you know, they, did, they wanted to have a no drug policy. Um, but when I found out that this little tug of war was going on, I was like, but wait a minute, you know, these are the, this is the South Lawn, these are the free speech steps, this is where the bailiff inside would tell me to go outside and smoke when I needed to take breaks from being at City Hall all day trying to, you know, draft and get regulations passed at City Hall, um, because I would ask, I mean, I would just... I wanted to be very, very upfront and transparent with the city of Los Angeles when I'd be down there all day long. And I wouldn't be the only patient. And I'd want to make sure that none of these patients who came down to City Hall were going to go to jail for testifying. But there are times, Terry, we were down there for four or more hours waiting for our turn to testify on our agenda item when it finally came up for a hearing. And some of these patients were coming in wheelchairs, I had Richard Kearns with me, other patients, and after, you know, a, a, you know, a couple, three hours of being there, people needed to medicate, and so I'd ask the bailiff, you know, where, where did myself and these other people go? And they wanted us to go on the steps there down by the South Lawn, but this was the turf that the Occupy was arguing over as to whether or not people were going to be able to use marijuana there, and that's where... You know, again, the wonderful use of the bullhorn, just to let everybody know, hey, it's okay. And and also, we're California. Well, I mean, you know? like, you know, what happened with that, too, is, yeah. is, is, is like, you know, I guess after you broke the ice, DJ, I mean, you know, the, the that camp became, like, the the most marijuana smoke. I mean, like, again, I, we had a guy from England that was coming from, uh, you know, the England uh, a cannabis, um, you know, uh, you know, the England, uh, you know, he was from, you know, doing, he was doing, um, sorry, he was doing uh, the Washington, I'm not, uh, the um, England 
uh, Occupy, and he came over to um, the our Occupy in Los Angeles, and uh, you know he goes he goes I've been to like a lot of different camps, but he goes this one is just like wafting with with marijuana, and well, and, I, and, and, and 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 I was like it's like and I, and I go well welcome to California, and it, it was everywhere. They were actually arresting people for open containers, but they never touched anybody for smoking marijuana on the lawn. As a matter of fact, we grew a marijuana plant. And uh, so, I mean, yeah, there was one there. I, I'm pretty sure it's not it was, there it now. It was a large camp, and it became it became part of it. And, you know, the whole reason that, you know, we, we started the Occupy 420 is, like I said, we had this federal attack that came at us, and then, you know, and the occupation was going on. And so I utilized the occupation as one of my, my places to gather signatures on a petition we took to the governor to ask the governor in the state of California to take some type of action to protect safe access against these attacks from the feds. And so you were down there certainly more often than I was, um, but you know I made sure I was down there on the weekends. And at 420, you know, I'd grab my bullhorn and walk through the camp and just wish everybody 420 and remind everybody that it was 420 and I don't know anybody who wasn't smoking it was a very culturally and what was going on down there was very very interesting and that was just it you know marijuana is California's number one cash crop and it's just time to recognize it own it tax it quit putting people in jail for it and um, you know uh, we're here Terry you and I are on the front lines of all of it we have been like just on the cutting edge and 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 right on the cusp of everything we educated the occupiers that cannabis is part of the occupation you know the same entities that run the Federal Reserve and are trying to run our food train chain and put fluoride in our water and everything else are the same people that made cannabis illegal. And, right, exactly. Uh, and and I, I think that anybody and that, and that's and that's the thing that that you know that I, I feel that people more and more people are beginning to realize that um, that again the the Rockefellers and the in DuPont and you know William Randolph Hearst and all, all the people that made it you know the people that own the pharmaceutical companies um, you know the people that are running the oil um, that own the banks you know they all made this plant illegal and you know those are the same people that um, you know that occupies pointing a finger towards we are talking about the one percent and you know this is a it has a much larger fabric of how it how it uh, of what's going on and uh, you know the cannabis plant is really you know I can't even think of a better solution and a more stronger movement uh, to move against those moguls you know uh, and it'll be interesting to see if uh, enough of people make that connection and you know I mean my feeling is to Jane I, I'm just gonna put it out there I feel that there's just a lot of greed um, you know, even within our own industry, within our own group, and I, I don't, I'm not going to call out names or anything like that. But um, you know, in order for us, I feel to change our paradigm is for us to start to regulate and take control of this plant. I mean, the TPP wants it. I mean, like there, if you if you read what's going on with that, um, they they're talking oh the plant, what to do with this plant, what to do with plant life, and you know I feel and so does my um, you know a shout out to Kevin Corn who is uh, my co-host on Hollywood Hemptress Hour and a North Flat, um, but we feel that we're they're talking about the cannabis plant. This is the biggest thing, uh, you know that that is, is is coming to the forefront. You know if you grow cannabis now, and we're talking about like the hemp plant, it held, it they, they it was recommended. It's been you know that that we grow hemp to absorb the radiation of Fukushima. I mean, this plant is has more than we're not just you know again, you know there is 
California is going through a, a difficult time with their uh, medical marijuana dis, uh, dispensary regulations. Uh, DeJay has been playing a, an incredible component in that. Um, you know, hemp can save the planet. Um, you know, DeJay, uh, you know, it, it, you know, I've been in, in the in the in the ground. I've seen the, our the own city halls. You know, let's let's not even get into, into Eagle Rock and Jose Weizar and I mean, you could just go on and on. I mean, you just look at me, and go, I, you look at me, who are you working for? Right? Because I don't think you're working for what you know what the what the city really the people the really want, want people what, what the, the voters, voters want it. now, and it's been very complicated in california unfortunately and that's why i'm i'm really 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 proud of everybody who has participated in making this initiative possible because you know proposition 215 california's first you know uh the, the country's first law uh, to legalize or at least make um, medical use non-criminal was California and that law is so short and so vague but that was the law that needed to be put in place to make it all you know to get that ball rolling and now look I mean where are we what are we like 18 or 19 states I've got the I've got the states listed here behind me on a, on a list of, of all of them. I got kind of a question mark next to Illinois. It's sort of medical there. It's their, their restrictions are so tough, it's kind of hard to say. But they did something, right? Yeah, um, I mean, we, we definitely, you know, I mean, if you look at the Gallup poll, 68 you know, uh, people. Had, like, the immense amount of movement, and, and there are other states talking about it. Uh, there are people trying to get it on the ballot in Arkansas. There are people trying to get it on the ballot in Florida. Um... You know, there. You know, it's just it's moving. Uh, Minnesota is talking about it. Uh, I, I can't even. It, it's probably already going on in Wisconsin, and they're just probably not even talking about it because that's the way they roll in Wisconsin. Um, but you know, it's like it is. It's it's moving across the country when we start seeing it in the deep south. Um, yeah, and that all started with Proposition Two Fifteen. So. Um, in order to get a law, you know, what happened after that, of course, we know the blossoming of the dispensaries and the cultivation. And, you know, and when I first moved down here to L.A., there was one major hydroponic store in greater Los Angeles and then like a couple out in the outskirts. There's got to be well over 80 really booming uh, hydroponic stores in metropolitan Los Angeles. Yeah, and when you ask them about growing marijuana, you know, they, they give you this attitude like, oh, we only sell basil, and we only we only grow basil and cherry tomatoes here. You know, I mean, I mean, there's definitely this, you know, and and that's still the stigma of of, of, of what people are you right. know fearing about in in a, in a law in a state that actually really legalize it. But one of the points that I wanted to make about um, about you know that uh, about greed and, and and things like that. I mean, if we're frustrated about how like the one percent is 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 delegating. Um, our money and how things are going. You know, trust me, they they they're ready to take control of it. They're ready to take control of this plant, and you know, we actually really have the, an opportunity to um, to use this and 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 actually be have a part of our new way of of, of business. And uh, this is my like I have a dream about that. I have a dream that that maybe there's a different way of of regulating um, a plant or making laws that are more just and fair and actually are about healing people and helping people and like you know keeping the planet um, you know healthy and clean and and everybody else on it and you know just maybe have like a different kind of like consciousness about it you know and you, you, you gun know out of your face what yeah I mean there's no reason why you should have a gun out of your you know in your face to smoke, smoke some herb I mean or to use it as a medicine or to be at a doctor's office to like to try to get the medicine you know um, as people we deserve to have choices of how we want to heal our bodies rather than you know I'm sorry but you know you know I, I'd like to have a different choice besides what Obamacare has to offer me you know I mean I, you know I'm not happy with the health care system still I mean even with Obamacare, great, okay, but you know, we'll like yeah, we'll how 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 it's how it's all done, how like pharmaceuticals are like put on the market just to like, you know, like here, let me here 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 here's here I'm gonna I'm gonna write you this prescription that you see on television that you think you need a, you need medicine for. Uh, I'm gonna write you this prescription for that because I'm gonna get an extra bonus and I want to take that cruise ship um, to uh, to Cancun. No. 
you know that's this is this is not the way I feel to to um, to help people and I feel that that, that can this these are what's happening you know for us to be proactive um, you know get involved in our legislature get involved and you know if, if you care about it you know roll up your sleeves and do something you just can't just like photos on Facebook and go gee that's really cool I really agree with that you know it's no, an it's an action it's oriented liking, type of thing photos on Facebook and you know these people that get all jazzed about signing these online petitions I'm telling you the way to end this all right now is for everyone to get a hold of their congressional member you vote can vote every day by letting your congressional member hey have you legalized marijuana yet I called you about that last week what's up and if every person who smoked weed in this country was ringing the phone of those 435 people saying, um, how's, that, how's, that, how's that whole ending cannabis prohibition thing going? Is there anything I can do to help? Hey, here's this new poll that shows how many people support legalization. What are you doing about that? I mean, when you look at how many congressional members are already sitting in districts that are, you know, in these medical marijuana states. And so what I'm trying to impress upon your your viewers is that by donating to this organization and making sure that I can stay in the field and that we can continue doing what we're doing, I will make that outreach to every single state in the union. I will get our educational materials out to every willing activist out there who supports the legalization of marijuana and cannabis and hemp to help us mobilize Congress to draft the right law and get it in front of Obama while he's still in office. And while people are doing that, you know, every year that Obama's in office, I'm willing to pull this rally permit and, and do it. But I'm sure that your, your viewers are, are intelligent. They know what it takes to run an organization. It's a small business. And I'm asking everybody, invest in legalization. Um, between myself, you can Google me and what I'm about. You can Google the proponents of the initiative. You can Google the, the people who are on my board. You can Google the people who are on the organizations of the other boards that I serve on. These are the people who are going to get it done. They're going to get it done in California. We're going to get it done on a national level. And right now, just here at the end of 2013, here at the end of the year, we need uh, a donation uh, to equal $2,700. And actually, Terry, we did get, uh, we did get some pledges uh, we did. earlier. We did. We got some pledges earlier. Um, so, you know, uh, we, we don't need that full 2700 now. We need closer to 1800 Oh, wonderful. So, so, so I, I'm so glad to, that we got some 18. pledges. So we went 1800. from 27 to 18 okay? So, yes. So, yeah, so it can be done, and it just, it takes, it just takes a few people, a little here, a little there, uh, you know, pans a, a tax-deductible donation. And, you know, I want to get this done, Terry. There are organizations out there that spend millions of dollars a year apiece and some of these organizations have been around for over 40 years and 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 the, uh, the laws haven't been reformed yet i'm here to get it done uh I get out of business <laughs> put me out of a job here um and and do this and move on and uh, we were talking about this earlier because as you know you, you sit on the board we have conversations about uh fundraising and our needs and we we looked at what our budget um, uh, is for everything we need to run. We've talked about these different programs. We've talked about the POW, all the education we're doing, the outreach to all the elected officials' offices, um, you know, the grassroots activism, the, the street theater and, and the, the rallies and the protests and, and everything that we're doing, as well as Access of Love and having that organization uh, running and being a model uh, there in the Bay Area. Our annual budget is only a hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year to do all of this even run this rally in Washington DC everything that we need to do the educational campaign um, we, we made the budget for it and we just need on an annual basis a hundred and eighty thousand um, and you know I've worked for some of these other organizations in the past or worked with them in some type of capacity and some of these organizations spend a hundred and eighty thousand dollars a month 
and I saw very little progress uh, and, and very little of what I saw was going to get the job done. And it's part of the reason I founded this organization. It's part of the reason why I work with the uh, activists and advocates that I do. Um, it's not easy being a grassroots act activist. And I'm really, really reaching out to your audience to get involved, um, look at this organization as an investment in the future, and you know, make us, you know, make a donation tonight, and consider making a periodic donation throughout 2014. Like I said, I want to. Yeah, we did talk about like the sustainer possibility where you know somebody could like maybe give ten dollars a month on a continual basis, and you know a, a lot of um, and I know because I've done fundraising for them before. A lot of that's a sustainer. I mean, if you want to come on and maybe you don't want to give you know, uh, $420 for 420 um, you know, or, you know, maybe you want to give, um, you know, $10, $5 a month, you know, $25 a month and have it being broken up over time, you know, kind of think of it as like, like we're kind of like Netflix for activism, you know, and... I'm, not, uh, I'm very willing to do these events with you, you know, once a month to reach out to people, let them know what we're working on and what we're doing, but it does, it, it takes a consistent budget because... Things move very slowly in the legislature, and it's not one phone call, and it's not one visit, and it's not one workshop, and it's not one city council meeting, and it's not one visit to Sacramento, and it's not going to be one visit to Congress that gets this done. It's going to be consistently doing it over time. We need to be doing this diligently for the, at least the next three years. If we don't, we have dropped the ball. This generation will probably have dropped the ball in getting federal legalization done anytime soon if we don't move while we've got this president. And it's, I, just, it, I think it's one of the most critical times in our history. While the polling is this high, we need to mobilize all these people and, and get Congress to do it, what we need them to do. Absolutely. And, you know, on that, I think it's time to, like, show a little bit of a comedy clip. Um, I've got, and um, we're actually getting down to, we, we've been doing this for almost two hours and 30 minutes so far. Um, again, hit that CannabisSavesLives.org button. Um, I'm going to play a comedy clip of a guy named Roland A. Doobie, who um, actually um, was the one of the editors or the editor for um, the last, um, most, I think the most current, um, Jack Hare, um, uh, The Emperor Wears No Clothes book, um, uh, and uh, he uh, is an, an activist, a well-spoken person. He was a part of uh, Ganja Palooza um, when I was doing it in Richland, Washington. On his way back, he was driving back um, uh, through Arizona, which is a no-tolerance law, and got busted. Of course, he has, you know, he's been, he's, he's quite the character in terms of his politics back in Kentucky, and, and, um, they, of course, they were after him, and he's very much a proponent of the cannabis oil and how it heals cancer, and, um, he, he was, inc you know, incarcerated for, like, over a month or so, got leukemia, and I'm happy to say is back, and we had him on Hollywood Hemdress Hour lately. He's back, he's up and running, he's, you know, kicking. And I just want to give a shout out to you, Roland A. Doobie. Just really love you. Um, you know, you're, you're one, of those, one of those great guys. And he's very funny, too. And I'm going to show a comedy clip of him. Um, and we'll be right back with more Ganjathon. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got a special guest. He currently resides in Atlanta, Georgia, but he was raised right here in Northern Kentucky. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Roland A. Doobie. That's right, my name is Roland A. Doobie. Marijuanaman.com. About the internet. There's my weed smokers. Thought you were here. I lost five pounds this week. My dealer is gonna kill me. He's here. I shouldn't have said that. No, don't raise your hand. No one nobody to leave. Now, I was gonna diet, but I figured I can't even see it. So what the hell does the color matter? You know. Uh. A really nice college crowd, right? I'm a college graduate. I got a master's in BS from LSD. Yeah. I'm a vegetarian. We got any vegetarians in here? Yeah, well, I'm not really a vegetarian. 
Now I'm a herbivore. I smoke herb before every meal. <laughs> Like I said, I'm from Kentucky. I'm from a little town called Warsaw, right across the river here. Anybody from Warsaw? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> hey, Kentucky's all right. You know, you can lose your license for driving drunk, but you can still take your tractor to the bra, uh, to the bar. I'm stoned. <laughs> I guess the bra—that's where the dyslexics drink. You know. I had a girlfriend that was dyslexic. She had those multiple origamis. <laughs> She graduated from the College of Fine Rats. <laughs> she, um, she told me I smoked too much pot. You know? She said, you might get hobbies. So I learned hydroponics. <laughs> and she broke up with me. I ain't bitter. I had my dog bite her. <laughs> I think I like dogs better than girls anyway. You, know, you go on a camping trip with a girl and you run out of toilet paper, you're stuck. With a dog, you just have to worry about the cold nose. Yeah. I smoke a lot of marijuana, I don't know if you can tell that. And marijuana makes your hair fall out. So. I remember the first time I tried pot, it was in the 80s. And I was like, God, this stuff would be good in any temperature. <laughs> I smoke pot for medical reasons. Because I have MS, Windows XP. And, uh, it causes a lot of stress. <laughs> I went down there and started working for this construction company and then I had to quit. Because everybody kept calling me a paranoid pothead in Morse code with their hammers. <laughs> it only takes so much of that. I was gonna I was gonna get back at them. I thought I'll, I'll cast a spell. I'll go get me a witch, you know, and get a cast a spell on these guys and do something evil. Hey, let me warn you, if you're gonna go to Atlanta. The Black Arts Festival has nothing to do with witchcraft. <laughs> Don't be misled by the name. Uh, but hey, I did meet a nice girl down there. She told me she only likes black bald men. And I'm not painting my balls black. But ever again. <laughs> Last time. With uh, you know, <laughs> uh, with uh, with with the, I guess we're we're at the last. I think we're almost at the last twenty-two minutes of um, our our um, our special. Uh, um, Gonjathon. Our Gonjathon. Our Thonjagonj. <laughs> you know, a Thonjagonj. A Gonjathon. And uh, you know, and and so now that you're back. Um, we, you know, we. This is actually. I don't know if, if anybody who like might maybe looks at this later on. Um, it's the day after Christmas. Uh, last night we did our first. We did six hours last night of stuff, and um, I didn't the have any vol last. volume the whole <laughs> night. Um, no, on on the night before last. God, it feels like last night. Um, and then I, I, you know, yeah. So. I'm so loopy with Christmas, and I've been editing all night. I actually, this is actually, for me, um, I'm at four and a half hours of doing um, shows, because I did, was on the other show for two hours before this, too, so, um, yeah. <laughs> but we're doing, I feel, if this is, I, I feel like I'm already doing, like, a, a Jerry Lewis telethon, but I haven't really been on that long. <laughs> So go to CannabisSavesLives.org and make a donation. Um, you know, to just look, like do like, um, and you know, and again, like DJ and I were saying that if if you if you write a twenty five hundred dollar check, um, you know, I do lingerie Friday night uh, lingerie show uh, on Hollywood Hemp Sour just because um, sometimes I like to dress up in lingerie and it's Friday night and and um, I'm I'm and it works. People like tune in. <laughs> <laughs> so and we, you know with the twenty five hundred dollars. Make a five thousand dollar donation. I'll join you. Oh, if I, uh, really? Now it's five thousand. We were going to go down. We're, we've upped well, the ante. If they, if they make a twenty five 
a hundred dollars donation, then you know, I don't know. I I, I guess you already do it. Right. So, I mean, they already. I mean, I well, I don't do it. I don't do it every Friday. I don't do it every Friday. But you know, maybe and maybe well, maybe you should just start making them pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I mean, I, you know, it, it, it's uh, um, I we can come up with another. So okay, well then let's make it five thousand dollars. Um, if if we're upping the ante here, if you give five thousand yeah, dollars, um, we'll both do the show together. We'll do we'll we'll do the show. Um, both and apparently I have some hemp knickers coming to me from the UK. Um, and there might be a woman who makes the knickers that could might be a sponsor and advertiser and you know I, I will dress up in all hemp um, lingerie um, you know just to make the point because uh, that even makes it sweeter uh, and uh, you know that's uh, the website for the um, new initiative that um, DJ has been with a colleague of people um, have been working on getting it on the ballot uh, ready to go um, I guess you know we're at the we're getting towards the signature gathering phase for for it and uh, so make sure you if you want to donate to that you know put make make your do, your designation that you want to donate to you know to that um, cannabis safe lives org if you want to donate to axes of love for Shona out in San Francisco you know let us know that that's what you want to do um, you know if you want to donate um, for us to have like some extra equipment you know you want to say hey those girls need to have a microphone um, you know what donate you know for a microphone um you know we can get one for a hundred you know a hundred dollars or less um we have viana haju viana haju um, needs um, money for her legal defense fund which we have been doing you know fundraisers and and drives for her um on the internet as well um and then we and and again let's yeah, yeah I, I feel like we kind of like I, I i'm missing the fun part of that 420 thing that's going on in washington and how we're wanting to rally with the other grassroots yeah, organizations. Get everybody together. You know, I mean, we, we, we might even have like a, a, a band there. I mean, like we're gonna have music, and it's gonna we're gonna show Washington how how mar how how the marijuana community and the people that want legalization how they know how to do a protest. And we're, you know, it, it's it sounds like it's a, like I would just want to go just to hang out and have fun. Um, you know, uh, dance and sing and, and 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 say, hey, you know, this is this is how we get well, really. Yeah, so um, you know, of course, it is a it is serious too, and we are making a point. But you know, there's going to be a lot more going I mean, on. You no, know, it's a, it's about fun. It's about street theater. Like I said, that you know, um, I I want to get out there in time to uh, buy the supplies we need to do uh, have an art party before the uh, actual rally. Um, it's gonna you know be very hard for people to travel with props. Um, so yeah, no, we need we need a budget for this. Not huge, like I said. We've already made. We already know what we need on an annual basis to do everything we need to do, including um, this campaign plus the rally. And that budget even includes making sure we uh, take uh, some patients out there with us who normally would not be able to afford to get from the the west coast to the east coast but we want to have some scholarships for some patients for whom it will mean a lot to be in Washington, D.C. So, um, no, we, we take what we do very seriously. Uh, we do a lot on a shoestring. We're, we're small, but we're very, very mighty. Um, and we just need everybody's support. The most immediate thing and the reason we're coming to everybody here during the holidays at the end of the year is we're just asking everybody, shake the couch cushions, help us get through this hump of now only needing eighteen hundred dollars like I said what what we what we've already raised all throughout the year is you know close to this 180 because that's how much we spend each year to, to run all of our programs and here at the end of the year we're of a shortfall we've got some rents to take care of um, we've got a bill here from our accountant I was holding that up earlier I don't people think we're just making it up you know Five hundred and fifty-nine dollars needs to go to our accountant. They're very nice to include an envelope with it and everything. Um, so you know, yeah, we, we're an organization. We've got real bills, um, like everybody else, and we, we like to be good and be good to true to them, so that we can get the job done. And uh, it's like running of any other business, except what we sell is our activism, and we do damn good at it. And uh, um, while we do really good at the activism, I think one of the things maybe our organization has been lacking is more promotion 
of what we're doing. We've opened congressional hearings. We've gotten Congressman John Conyers to make statements. We've helped people get out of jail. Um, you know, we've done a lot of really good work. Um, our, our people are a lot of unsung heroes, and we're ready, we're ready to grab that baton and run the ball through the goal and legalize marijuana once and for all so that we can move on to all these other issues. And, you know, we touched upon them. There's a, there's a, lot, a lot of freedom to fight for in this country, and I want to get this one done, and I want to move on. So I'm hoping that um, your very conscious viewers will shake the couch cushions and make a donation. I don't care if it's four dollars and twenty cents, or you know maybe there's someone uh, that can donate four hundred and twenty dollars. Maybe there's someone out there in your community that has the ability to donate a thousand dollars or even ten thousand dollars. Pan's a registered five hundred one c three organization. Um, we'll we'll do it. We're gonna get it done. Gonna get it done. Yeah, um, we are we are going to get it done, and. Uh, you know, we only have like uh, again like twenty minutes left, and and since we were talking about like how um, you know the protest in Washington is going to be you know artistic and and um, you know have all these other different elements of how we get the message out there, um, we did have like one we we did do the medical marijuana float uh, at Gay Pride Pride Parade um, back in two thousand and eight, uh, and Dejay and I pretty much um, from start to finish you know uh, when we toyed around the idea but when we finally submitted ourselves and went to the first float making class it seemed like we did it in like six weeks uh, raised the funds um, and and uh, had this like amazing day and won the butterfly award for the most colorful and original float that day um, we took like a coveted prize um, because you know people who smoke weed are creative <laughs> And Our float uh, was very creative. We were very so colorful much. and imaginative. It was very imaginative. It was very creative. It was very fun. We were cultivating pride. Um, Christopher Street West had uh, uh, a series of uh, themes for each parade, and, and the themes that they were rotating through were love, equality, and pride. As and you talk, was, I'm going to see if I can, I can pull up that picture for everybody to see. So it was, just, uh, it was, uh, yeah. So the 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 theme was pride. So our our entry was it, it was encouraged to be in the theme of of pride. And one of the uh, slogans that we use with the Patient Advocacy Network is uh, cultivating knowledge and understanding. Um, so I kind of said, well, maybe for this we'll be cultivating pride. You know, why not? You know, this is, you know, we're, we're going to take what our organization about and what, what the what the Pride Parade is about. We're going to put them together. And so, yeah, our, our float was about, uh, you know, having this very uh, fun and unusual, surreal marijuana garden uh, on the back of this float. And we just had a wonderful cast of characters, um, you know, Blue Iris. Uh, Janet Stewart, Richard Kearns, who are no longer, those three are no longer with us, uh, but they were, they were there on the float. Um, we, you know, we had kind of talked about this before uh, in, on the show with, you know, Layla's the, the super sexy cowgirl butterfly and um, Va Va Voom, Erica the bumblebee, <laughs> and Tanya as the coolest disco sun and our praying mantid, and it, it was just, and the and you know we, we took these uh, Christmas trees and uh, kind of gnarled them up in such a way and put them in an asymmetrical way and kind of curled the ends and stuff and colored them and made it frosty and put hairs and stuff on them and uh, giant fan leaves. I still have some of the cardboard left from the big gigantic fan leaves that we put in these uh, trees and made them look like just super gigantic buds. And uh, you and Jen were the transgender couple who were the gardeners, and I was down on the ground passing out literature that looked like joints, dressed as a fairy that was wearing not much more than glitter. And, you know, we won the Butterfly Award, and we were also, as I figured, just wonderfully received um, by the uh, people who came to see the parade. And it was just... It was a really, really uh, incredibly fun day, and I'm really glad we did it. Here's, it here's the picture. Reach out to everybody. So I'm hoping in the meantime, Terry, is, is we, I'm sure we're probably getting ready to 
to sign off here shortly. We are, and you know what? Um, our yeah. volume did something a little funky there for a minute, and so I think... If you want to play that video, that video you made here at the end, so we can wrap up and you can show that. But yeah, I just want to let people know, you know, we're, we're small, we're mighty, we we don't need a huge amount we of We might have lost reception there for a little while, so um, we do have like about, we literally have um, a, you know, seven minutes again. I think we lost a little bit of that broadcast when I had it on the picture. Um, I think I made it, I didn't make an adjustment of volume, so they might have missed a little bit of the of the marijuana story. Um, that's okay, we can recap that again, but you know, we want to do like, definitely make, like let the viewers know, let's recap what everything that Pan does and, and drive it home again of, of, of what, what people are getting when they when they make a donation. We can do that in the next eight minutes or seven minutes. We got seven minutes to get that piece of information out. So, um, you know, one of the things again, um, we do do things like medical marijuana floats. We do, we did make a big statement. These are, that's just the tip of the iceberg of what we did. We got Shona and Axes of Love uh, giving to her community, making sure that people have are fed and they have medicine when they don't normally get medicine. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's still better than Obamacare. And um, then we have um, the initiative and the MCLR uh, coming up and if you want to see more there's the website there uh, you want to make a donation towards um, you know those efforts to legalize marijuana across the board in California uh, making the medical marijuana laws be okay um, as well as you know uh, industrial hemp and uh, you know and, and making it for recreational use let's get California up to snuff with Washington okay and um, who's you know we six storefronts coming out in Vancouver alone thank you very much uh, and also um, we have have the um, our you know the 420 march uh, in on 420 in front of um, the Washington DC we already have a permit um, we already got the space we want to get other grassroots uh, organizations that are on the forefront of their cities to come and join us and um, be on the lawn with us and 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 make this monumental um, uh, you know, uh, effort. You know, we thought the gay pride parade was something. Now we're going to Washington. Also, Viana Haju, uh, who um, Haju, who um, is you know has an unfair um, case where basically, if, you know, when the ACLU's been invest investigating sw SWAT style raids, whether or not they were pr appropriate and whether or not they were treating people the way they should be treating them, um, or even necessary, this is one of those cases. Um, I think this is the closest example of what you consider to be abusive um, than any other um, type of, um, you know, uh, raid that I know of. And you can, you know, support all these causes and all these people and all these efforts that um, PAN is doing. And all you need to do is go to CannabisSavesLives.org. And remember, if you do give $5,000... DJ will come on the show with lingerie with me. Oh no! So you know, you know, you know, you know, you want to. I'm, I'm not gonna let that. But I mean, who's the, who's the man who can trump it up and be like Donald Trump? Well, Donald Trump, that five thousand dollars is peanuts to him. Right? They know I'm not gonna have problem with the lingerie. Right. Right. So, um, so, so, you know, let's do it. Let's, let's make those donations. Let's um, make it happen. Let's make it happen. Like I said, we're down to needing $1,800. Uh, that's all we need. It's just going to pay some bills. We've got some cell phone bills to pay. We've got an accountant to pay. We've got a little rent to pay. We've got some food to take care of for some people. Um, and then we need to move into the new year. So I'm hoping that we will continue to, um, entertain and, and enlighten your viewers and, and let them know what we're working on and let them know the progress of these campaigns but they're not going to happen without their support absolutely like, we, we we can do all of this we can get the job done for a, a fraction of what other organizations who claim to be doing the job um, of getting it done. I'm going to get it done. CannabisSavesLives.org. We're going to say goodbye. We're going to take it out with a little bit more, and we're going to go out with the music that we started. We thank you so much for tuning in, um, and we'll see you, um, you know, next time. Uh, maybe, you know, hopefully in a month. So here we go. like this but it got extended for an extra hour and people cheered we're live streaming on my live stream uh, oh, show okay. on Freedom of Choice Damn Mind um, like you're telling a little bit about that you were explaining you go to yes. like 20, 222 
2,200 events I've done in 14 years, yeah. These aren't Mormons, these are Masons. Yeah. These yeah. are Masons. possibly a combination between the religion and Freemason. I didn't get to meet anybody famous, but I got a, I got a massage at Comic-Con. <laughs> Salt Lake City 2012, I need a t-shirt. 13. 13, fuck it, whatever year it is. <laughs> Salt Lake City was going to Walmart. Yeah, apparently I was offensive, but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the first time I've done that in Utah. Like, and I go, well, it's, a, it's you know, mostly about, like, sex and politics. And he goes, oh, yeah, we, it's okay here. You're free. You know, you, you, we like it dirty. I'm man dressed as a stormtrooper. <laughs> church and yeah. state. The church was the Me state. Too. The state and was yeah, the church. Felt it shows a pentagram. Oh. There's a pentagram. Interesting. And Salt Lake City! 